Hi, this is Kimberly. I am pleased to bring to you today a cleaned up version of the infamous Chris Watts Wisconsin interview that CBI agent Tammy Lee, FBI special agent Graham Coder, and Frederick Police Department Detective Dave Baumhofer did in February 2019. Well, they showed up unannounced. I mean, it shocked, startled, and perplexed. Penhead, unannounced, and Chris Watts was like, what? You know what I'm talking about. And all you hear is... <laughs> just static. Sta and there's all these loud booms and hisses near the mic that's recording. Oh my goodness. Land sakes alive. It, it... And it was just like, you know, I mean, I, I, I was... <laughs> anyway, I was able to clean that up surprisingly well. There's still booms and stuff. You know, these unexplained phantom noises that show up when you just record audio. But, oh, that's probably just me. I've done my best with that part without distorting their... Damn it, I can't even talk without <laughs> distorting what they are saying. So, it was my original intent anyway to do subtitles because there's so many parts. If you're like, now what did he say? And people will kind of debate back and forth. One of them being... Damn it, I forgot that shit too. I, I, I mean, yeah, I mean, you know, I'm just like... You know, Anyway, it'll come back to me, but I was still going to do subtitles because, well, that's the kind of person I am. For the most part, you don't need them now, but I decided, screw that. It's too much of a damn undertaking, and it's not necessary, you know, because people love to point out shit to me and tell me how it's all fucked up, hurt my feelings. I mean, it's a damn full moon every time. There's a full moon, crazies come out, and they come after me, and they say shit that makes no sense. So anyway, yeah, I, I was talking about those loud booms and stuff, and hisses, and some of that stuff will make your damn ears bleed. You turn it up so you can hear what they're saying, and then, without warning, boom! And yes, I realize I have just described my own audio issues. I'm aware, thanks. It's part of my charm. I, I mean, yeah, I mean, you know, and just like, you know, and it was just like, you know, I mean, or I've, somebody will start laughing real loud, Tammy Lee, out of the blue, and you're like, God, y you know what? I picture Tammy Lee as being the youngest child and the only girl, and just having all these rambunctious brothers, and I'm probably way off because I don't know how to read people and stuff but yeah these noises that end up making your ears bleed so i mean i'm okay now my husband is used to finding cotton balls with dried up blood stuff and laying about the first aid kit sprawled across the kitchen table death by chocolate ice cream dripping on the floor over by the refrigerator and freezer that was left open a mere two inches and then when i finally emerged from my slumber afternoon slumber it's, oh, it's, it's, it wasn't a nap. It was from going to bed for the night. But I didn't stumble in till like 545. I do that stumbling in thing now completely sober. And I think I was better at it when I drank. Because you got to hide that shit, right? I learned that from my dad. So anyway, so when I finally emerge from my beauty sleep and he bites his tongue and doesn't tell me to go back that I'm not done. That only happened once. It won't be happening again. But, um, so, yeah, he'll kind of give me the side eye while I'm making my coffee. And he has thoughtfully already filled up the pot thing with water. And it's already warm. And I just got to heat it up and get to guzzling the coffee. And so I'll get the side eye while he sizes me up trying to figure out when would be a safe time to speak. And uh, the, uh, so he'll start off with something safe and short. You all right? That's a very loaded question. It is kind of good morning, good afternoon. How you doing? Did you sleep okay? 
how's your mood? Do you need to go to the ER? Are you wearing your last pair of underwear? Stuff like that, you know? Yeah, I, yeah, why? Like, and then I'll start snapping at him. He's going to wash my hair today, for God's sakes. I just got up. And he'll wordlessly point to the first aid kit, indicating, you know, that was his intention when he said, yeah, I, and, you know, he has left everything untouched as it, it's evidence. See, we have our own clue and mystery game and all that stuff that we do here. It's a kind of a unspoken to and fro that we've perfected over the years. It, it was... I, I... For God's sakes, I just got up. And he'll wordlessly point to the first aid kit again. And grandchildren are not even allowed to eat. They're, or they're allowed to eat in other parts of the house. Which is usually strictly off limits. But he wants to preserve and an untouch and undisturb the evidence. So, and then I'll start. I had a dad blamed whisker. My God, is nothing private? And I'll start slamming my coffee cup around and stuff. My glass of ginger ale or Sprite, whatever we have, whatever was on sale that week. Diet, of course. I'll be like, I just fucking woke up and you want me to clear the kitchen table, exfoliate my face, wash my hair, mop the kitchen, take out the trash and clean the fucking freezer. I just... Oh, and allow me. And then I stomp over to the kitchen grocery list on the refrigerator and I hold the pen and my hand's shaking because I had not take my meds yet and they worn off from last night. And I'll hold the pen, like, it, not like I'm going to write, but, you know, the way someone would hold a knife that they're going to stab, you know, and it's so I can scrawl out the word. I, I hold it like I have those nauseatingly long curling around old fingernails and then I'll scratch out in big bold letters death by chocolate ice cream exclamation point then I'll underline it <laughs> you know really hard with the pen about five times so hard that it rips the paper of, or, or that's the good day how are you equivalent of slamming off to bed it's a good way of saying I've just gotten up and if you know what's good for you just stay away and I take full advantage of this time alone because when I do my slamming off equivalent they know that I will well I'll, I'll start the communicating process and it, just a touch not too much but just the right amount of friendly banter to, you know, let him know I'm not mad, but just still leave me the fuck alone. And then he's like, oh, all right. And then he'll finally, oh, I see him with a big sigh of relief. He'll go pop a beer. I'm like, okay. He sits in the t front of the TV. I sit in front of the computer. And we do our little to and fro and where we, you know, discuss current events and shit. But it, if I had more of this said, time alone during the day I wouldn't have to stay up all night that's what I always say but you know I, I still would anyway because like nobody calls you at night the doctor's offices leave you alone and there's not people knocking at the door you know pointing out that your windows are 20 years old and those came original with the house and I'm like yeah and I'm like, this is a turn of the century house. And, and they'll do another quick take. And, well, you must have done a modern remodel of it. Was it a total tear down? And I'm like, what are you talking about, dude? It was a new build in 1999. He's, oh, I, I don't, for some reason I was thinking Victorian. Good day, ma'am. I get scratched off that list. I'm like, hell yeah, one more day. And then, you know, if, if they ring the bell or knock a second time, I, I just flip on the sprinklers. We have those in ground so they don't know, but word spreads fast. Yep. So anyway, after I bitch him out about, God damn it. You want me to clean the kitchen and write shit on the kitchen list and clean up the death by chocolate? He doesn't even eat ice cream. Off the floor and blah, 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 blah. And I'd be like, stop nagging me, you old billy goat. And he calls me an old bag or battle axe and stuff like that. We've, we've tested out other names for each other. Those are approved names now where we know being able to call 
one another derogatory names that have been pre-approved in advance is one of the secrets to a long-lasting marriage. However, that doesn't mean you can overuse them, as, as my husband learned the hard way. Anyway, let me shut up, and as per usual, and if you're new, if I remember, I write the timestamp where you can jump to where the real video starts. That's just how it is around here. Don't ask me to change. I'm not going to do it. If you don't agree with it, it's not the fucking airport. Don't announce your departure. Just fucking go. Don't let the door hit your chapped ass on the way out. I hope you enjoy this video. Much love and peace. Thank you for listening. Hey, Chris. Chris. Do you remember us? Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Hi, I'll just put in a moment there. Good to see you. They, uh, well, get the haircut every two months. So I just, I just uh, buzz pretty much everything off and all that. So. I'm trying to think of a yes, tea uh, last time? Okay. They have like a little single blade razor, so I just kind of, you know, like go past the stubble. You just kind of do the best you can, huh? You just gotta go with that. Yeah. How are you doing? I'm okay. How about you guys? Good. Good. I, did, I did not expect it. See this, that's for sure. Surprise. <laughs> yes. well, well, let me put some fears aside. Um, we're not here for what you might think we might be here for. <laughs> well, no, they, they, they didn't know what this, this is a computer room. I was like, I didn't know how to have a computer room. Uh, <laughs> without computers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So you remember, um, I talked to you, Tammy talked to you, Dave talked to you. We're all in Colorado. Um, and so the last time we talked to you was a different situation, right? Um, our investigation was open and your case was open. Um, that's completely different now. So your case is completely closed. Um, nothing about what we're going to talk about today is, has anything to do with an open investigation. So we're not here to get more charges on you or get any statements from you that are going to jam you up anymore. Right? That's all done. So all of our cases are closed and the court case is closed. So there's nothing that we're going to talk about today that's going to get you in any type of more trouble at all. Um, and so that's how I wanted to make sure you knew that that's not why we're here. Okay. Um, but why we are here. So um, the three of us work from three different agencies, right? Quite a bit different. Mm -hmm. um, CBI, FBI, and Frederick, different goals. And um, the things that happened with you kind of all brought us together. And as the months have passed on since everything happened, we just keep in touch with each other and we keep talking to each other. And we've all separately kind of said, um, did Chris seem unique to you? And me and Tammy have talked about this, Dave and I have talked about this. Did Chris's situation seem different to you? And we keep having that conversation. We can't quite put our finger on it, right? We think that your life leading up to all of the things that happened uh, were very interesting to us. And for me personally, I don't know if you remember, but one of the last things you told me was, hey, Graham, I'm sorry that I started lying. Um, and that stuck with me for the last couple months. It ringed in my head, right? I've never, ever worked a case like this where someone told me that, ever. You know? And so... As I walked away, I thought, Chris is different. Chris is a little bit unique in that regard. Um, so in talking with Tanya and talking with Dave, um, I said, you know, what did you feel like when it all went down? When we were there, when we were talking to you guys, and we all kind of, in our own different way and in our own different wording, said it all happened a bit too quick for us, right? So when we saw you last, we were talking and talking and talking about your family, about your parents, about everyone. And then the next thing you know, for me and Tanya and for Dave, all of a sudden, some patrol officers came in and arrested him, and that was far quicker than we had hoped it would happen. Um, and you understand why that happened, and we understand why that happened, but it left us with a thousand questions that we didn't get to ask. And then even more importantly, I think it probably left you with a thousand things that you didn't get to talk about with us. I don't know if you feel that way or not, but... Um, and so, that's why we're here today. Um, we wanted to kind of talk to you a little bit more about everything, you know? I think there's a lot of things that you didn't get to talk about. And so, you know, that's why we're here. Um, and it sticks with me that to this day, there's not one person that's told me, I saw it coming. I knew Chris was like that. I knew it. Not one person. So it's just, it's, it's interesting to me, right? No, not one. So we want to talk a little bit about that. Some of the people that we work with, uh, your family, Janan's family, um, have said, you know, if you get to talk to Chris, would you tell him some things for me? So we have that to talk about today, and it's good. I think you'll like it. I think it will give you some closure. Um, and so, really, that's why we're here. Are you available to talk to us? Yeah, um, definitely. Okay. All right. Um, so, off the bat, if you have any questions, just tell us. Okay. If there's something that you don't want to talk about, that's okay. Um, we might press you a little bit. 
Okay, you might say, well, do you mind if we just maybe then ask one question? Um, if something makes you uncomfortable, just tell us. Um, if we need to take any bathroom breaks, we can take bathroom breaks. Um, you know, for anything like that. And we'll take bathroom breaks and water breaks ourselves too. Um, so then, is there anything about your schedule today that makes it that you can't talk to us? No, that this, there was like a pass for this and the AM and the PM? Yeah, it's, yeah they reserved the room the whole day. Oh, okay. just in case. That's just what they do. Okay. I didn't yeah. know if that was like two separate things. I think you have to go back for lunch to get um, counted for or something. Uh, accounted for. Yeah, I think. 11.30. Lunch is, yeah, lunch is like 11, but the count is like 12, 15. Okay. So in general, how is it here? It's a lot different than Colorado. Though. Is it? You know, it's, Good or bad? It's better, I think. It's, I mean, it's here, I'm actually around other people. I mean, in Colorado, it was just like, I was segregated and there was counting on the walls all night, screaming and, you know, just mm -hmm. From me. other people? Oh, yeah. Really? Oh, they're just telling me like how I should kill myself and like what they're gonna do to me and oh. yeah, it was today this this is a lot different because I mean people here they don't seem to it's not like they don't care, but it's just kinda like they they don't take they only like, judge you as soon as you walk in. Colorado it was like they they knew why I was there and they just that was it. They were mm -hmm. just like they just they had one second alone with me, it would have been really they were, yeah. Jeez, man. Yeah. Must be out then. Out of out of like what kind of jail. I don't know how, what it was like in, you know, DOC there, but, you know, like, they had to lock down the jail for me to walk down the hallway. Wow. And it will? Mm -hmm. So they had to make sure you were completely separated from anyone else. Mm -hmm. Jeez. Wow. Like, I couldn't, I didn't see anybody else there. Like, I was, I was still next to somebody, mm -hmm. but, like, I never saw them. You just hear them? <laughs> how did I know who you were? I, I don't know. I just, um, they, they make phone calls in there, too. Oh, okay. And they got the newspaper in there before I got in that, got in there, so. Yeah. How is, uh, have you been able to talk with family? Members? Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, we get, uh, from 6 p.m. to 7.30. That's our, 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 our my unit's time out. So, we get to use the phone at that point in time. Really? Mm -hmm. And do they charge you for it? Or? Oh, it's just like, uh, it's like secures or something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And how do you make money to pay for that? Um, they put, uh, money on the phone. Oh. So, if I call, like, if I was, like, to dial somebody's number, they have to have, like, a phone account set up. Oh, oh I just had restricted. And then so the who you call pays for it? Yes. Oh, okay. Have you been able to talk like family members and parents and all yeah, that? Yeah, my mom and dad, my sister. Okay. Good. Is that a good thing? That's a good thing. Good. good yeah, they, if they don't hear from me, they're like, oh, what's wrong? What's wrong? Oh, <laughs> good. And how is it with them? And so far, so good. Yeah. Yeah. It was, uh, it was hard to hear your parents at sentencing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I didn't know if they were gonna, what they were going to say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, yeah. I really appreciated what they said. I don't know about you. I oh, definitely it was. I didn't expect them to be there. But I knew they were there on the six, number six, but I didn't expect them to fly back. And oh. I wanted to fly back to that. So. Yeah, and then a lot of what your mom said. Mm -hmm. yeah. Good. Well, so we have a thousand questions. I'm sure you do too. Do you care if we start, or do, yes. you, have, do you have any questions for us? Right. Go ahead. Okay. Start. All right. So one of the things that we're battling with is, um, and I, I should, I won't make any assumptions today. So. Are you aware that this was a national story? After after a little while, it was. I, I, I didn't talk to my parents while I was in Colorado. Okay. Because, I mean, my attorney team told me, all right, no phone calls, no letters, no, no nothing. Yeah, okay. So, like, I made I made one phone call. I was in the segregation area there, but my dad didn't thought it was, like, somebody, like, a new, oh. somebody trying to call. Oh, so he didn't Colorado answer? Number. Yeah, so he didn't answer, but other than that... Okay. I didn't talk to anybody, but from what the some of the deputies were saying that you know, or my attorney team coming in and said, you know, this is like they've got people from Australia, England, and all kinds of people trying to. Grow. Did they send you any? Did they send you any of the letters, like fan mail or anything? Well, um, I got letters, but I couldn't keep them, okay. like it with me. So like I could read them like on my hour out, but it's like you know I got a bunch of letters that had no return address. Oh, stuff that was just not, not very good letters. Yeah. Okay. They came from a weird perspective, didn't they? From what we had heard. Definitely. There was there was one person, I guess, from Broomfield that was like writing like four times a week trying to come visit me. And there was just a lot of people like writing that was like week through markers saying, you know, like you're a monster, all kinds of okay. stuff. All right. Well, I don't, we're going to talk about some hard issues today, but I don't intend to take you to a dark place today. Okay. Um, I hope that when we're done, you'll feel better. I hope it'll be therapeutic. Um, we're going to talk about, obviously, uh, what happened with your family. So that's going to be hard to talk about. I appreciate anything you can tell me about it. Um, if you need to take time out, if you need to get a tissue, that's fine, right? Um, I think it'll be very good for you. It'll be good for us. And so one of the reasons I asked about that national attention is we were aware that you were getting a lot of letters, um, a lot of interest. 
And then us personally as law enforcement, we got so many people who claim to have known you, claim to have been with you, dated you, slept with you, and 99 times out of 100, they were just crazy people, right? Um, and so maybe that's a good place to start. Had you heard about any of that? Uh, John, well, she told me about uh, one dude from Wyoming. Yeah. Trent? <laughs> yeah, that's that guy. That, that, that blew my mind. I was like, who the hell is this guy? And who told you about that? Uh, Attorney John Walsh. Oh, okay. Yeah. You mind if we talk, talk about him? <laughs> Graham and I interviewed him. <laughs> you had to? Yes. A waste of our lives. Yes. So, Trent, in summary, Trent came in and said, I met you online on a dating app, had a few, you know, uh, casual but quick sexual encounters with you. Um, and, and let me be very clear. Not only are we not here to jam you up today, we're also not here to judge you. And if there is anything like that, you can imagine we've heard way worse, way different, way, you know. So um, if it's true, I hope that you can just casually say, yeah, I mean, this happened. It wasn't as bad as he said, but maybe this happened. So his story was met online, met you, and it was a time when you were uh, experimenting with maybe with men. And so he said, met a couple times, met his friends, went to an apartment, uh, had a couple of meetings in a parking lot, and that was basically it. Any of that sound familiar? Okay. No, I never met the guy. Okay. All right. Yeah, he talked about being in a, your truck with your girls, like the whole nine yards. So. Okay. <laughs> okay. I've never even been to Wyoming, let alone okay. driven up there to see someone. Yeah. And so this is maybe a weird question for you. And maybe, uh, do you have any uh, gay experience? No. Okay. Any interest? Yeah. Never had a time, experimented, wondered? No. Okay. Is it possible that he found you instead of you finding him? Uh, what John told me, just to find me on like a WhatsApp. Yeah. I don't even have that app. Okay. Never, I mean, you had my phone. So okay. You probably, yeah, we know. You could probably saw what app I had. Okay. I've never even heard of the app, but okay. apparently, like, he told me, like, I had to do, like, a rehab center or something. Is that what he said? No, uh, that was another guy. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. 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 It was, it was totally... I, no so did you see a picture of him on the news or anything? Um, John showed me a picture of him. Okay. I was like, well, this guy, like, he was, I was kind of you know, making fun. like, do you know him? Sure. I'm like, no. So you saw it and you were like, no way. Yeah, Big like, lips. Did you see the, mm, his giant lips? Yeah, I was like, I have no clue who this guy is. And he's somewhat memorable. I mean, yeah. If you met him or talked to him or got to know him, you might remember. Um, he's, he's, he was kind of meek. Yeah. But also a little bit um, flamboyant. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, he, he fake lip or not fake lips but injections uh -huh. he was very yeah. into skincare and makeup and he mentioned that one of the times just as a gift you got him some skincare products mm -hmm. any of that sound familiar no okay you can imagine all the stuff we're dealing with okay so that's one mm -hmm. uh, trent bolts <laughs> there was another gal that you were dealing with amanda mcmahon have you ever heard that name no don't show me a picture of her okay. oh you did see a picture of her too yeah yeah he, uh, he had like uh, it's 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 that, does that look familiar that's the same picture you showed me on the okay. MSO one. I was looking, I was like, who's that? He's like, oh, you don't know her either? Yeah. I was like, no. <laughs> yeah. He said it was like a Chick fil A parking lot rendezvous or something. Right. And that's just not true. That's what she's claiming. No. Okay. Um, well, I wonder one Chick fil A in Colorado, that was the one in Broomfield, Highway 7. Okay. That was it. Okay. Um, do you feel comfortable enough today to tell us if there were other people? Yeah, it was just like, oh, okay. Yes. And that was it. Yeah, that was okay. It. Um, as these people have come out, for the most part, we've not given their stories much credit. They're just crazy people who want attention. And so, but when that does happen, it does make us think, you know, there may have been others. And so Nicole was the only one. I was the only one. Was there ever like a one night stand with someone else just out of the blue and one and done? Okay. All right. Um, you want to talk a little bit more about Nicole? Walk me through it. Because that was one of the things we never really got to ask you about. Right. Um, we didn't we just talk kind of skipped on and, you know, talked about where the girls were. But, so what happened there? So it was probably around... I had June 1st or something. That's when I first met her. And uh, it was just like a work conversation. I actually messed with the gas meters that, you know, we were out in the field. And um, I was messing up. And then, you know, I took a door like, hey, what's going on with this? Like, how do I fix it? And, you know, after that, you know, we just ran into each other a few times in the office. And I think it was probably the fourth time meeting she had asked me. Because, like, when I, we were talking back and forth, I would say, uh, you know, like, we moved here from Colorado or from North Carolina, stuff like that. And then uh, she was like, what's all this weed stuff you come like, oh, I took up my phone and showed her a picture. Like, you know, my girl's on the phone. I was like, oh, okay. She's like, so you're doing like, yeah. I was like, you know, I don't wear, I didn't wear a ring at work because like, I got also get refitted when I lost all that weight. So, but, um. You lost so much weight that your fingers lost weight? Yeah, it was literally like, I was out in the snow one time. I went like that and my ring went off on the rock. I was just, like, I was panicking trying to find out that I can't wear this anymore. <laughs> but, um, so after that, she left me alone for a couple of days. 
place, <laughs> and she texted me outside the field. Then after that, we just kept texting back and forth, and it was just, you know, just like, like she used to work in a little rig out in North Dakota, I think, and uh, we just kind of shredding stories back and forth about what we did and everything, and then one day, it just kind of went to a different, different level, and then I never thought I would ever go to that level, but she was talking about meeting up after we got back from San Diego. After, after, we were uh, yeah, we were in San Diego from the 22nd to the 26th of June, and uh, we met up after, after we got, after we got back, and... Uh, How did you guys meet up? Uh, at a park in uh, Florida, I think at Florida somewhere. Um, and after that, we just kept seeing each other in my whole month of July. So let me ask you this. Um, you tell me if I'm wrong. You strike me as somewhat of a shy person. So when you guys were meeting, it was just kind of very initiatory, like flirting at first. Okay. From both sides? Yeah. Okay. It was just kind of like feeling each other out. It was kind of yeah. like I don't... Yeah. Um, and so texts, any calls? More near the end of June. Okay. And what makes you remember that it's June that, that it happened? Because we called each other before I left to go to San Diego. Oh, okay. All right. Um, at first, did you think something might happen? I just thought it was just flirting. I didn't think it was actually like something that would actually yeah. happen. Yeah. Well, it's totally natural, right? I mean, everyone kind of flirts at work, right? Um, because the relationship between men and women is different. So if you're working with a girl at work, it's just kind of natural to flirt. I no, get it. I wish I was on the field more so than the office. It was kind of like, yeah. Yeah. You kind of see it in your eyes. That's, uh, that's kind of where the path started. Yeah, I mean, if I was like, because when I was a field, when I went from uh, like a rover to a field coordinator, like I would spend more time in the morning time in the office trying to get everything like situated where we're gonna go, everything like that. You know, if I was a rover, I'd be more out in the field mm -hmm. instead of like going to the office like for more than an hour. Right, it just gave me more time to run into her. Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. What did she know about you? Did she know you were married at first? She did. Once I showed her the pictures yeah. on my phone. Yeah. On the, like, you know, the home screen picture. Mm -hmm. So was your wife in that picture or was it just your girl? It was just my girls right there, but my wife was the, like, the lock screen. Oh. So she knew I was married when she was Are you aware that she said she didn't know you were married? That's what did you not, think about that? It was like, just trying to, same face, trying to, you know, I was just trying to, you know, some of my sister said it was like, uh, just trying to keep things together. Yeah. Just trying to, she 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 phrased it a different way, but just kind of like uh, like ground control, just trying to control everything that's going on around her. Because I'm sure she got bombarded by all kinds of different sides from the media and everything. So and have you talked to her at all? No. Uh, I'm no. hoping she hasn't like you know written me in a different alias or something. No, I'm not talking to her that way. Oh. Uh, uh, and are you not allowed to talk to her? I, I would hope not. Okay. No one's told you that, though. No, I mean, I would, I would expect like, uh, I, I thought like in Colorado it said like the DOC list. Of, if you're on a, like a victim list, you can't call anybody. Oh, right. But here, I'm not sure if that's the same. But okay. I've just talked to my sister, parents, uh, some friends of my parents. Okay. Do you wish you could talk to her? Maybe once, just to just get some closure. Just to say like, hey, you know, just once. <laughs> yeah. Say hey, like, I'm sorry this all happened. I'm sorry. I'm not sure like what happened like afterwards. Like what you went through. Like. If you had, like, counseling, if you're, like, you know, different state, if you had to leave everything behind, I just want to let you know, I'm sorry, and that's something I'm talking about, like, I think, or I think somebody else could. Would you be all right if we told her that? That's fine. Do you want us to? Do you want us not to? And if she would want to even talk to you guys, then I'm not sure if you can tell me. I'm sure she'd answer your phone call more than an attorney phone call that she didn't want to call. Answer? Yeah. Oh, so your attorney tried to call her and she wouldn't answer? Yeah. Yeah, cause I remember, I remember her phone number, but uh, after that they figured out, I guess, where she lived. They left a call, uh, business card there, and she just, pretty much after like the fifth attempt, they said, she said, stop. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 I'm sure she's getting bombarded like everyone else, so. Hopefully it's calmed down since, but, but uh, I'm sure, like, I just hope she can, like, move, like, I don't know if there's, like, normalcy for her, not uh, since she's on the outside, but. Hoping it can get that way at some point. I'm not sure if she had to leave Colorado or not, but I'm sure like, that would have been hard if she did. Mm -hmm. I know that Narco was her dream job, so that's one thing I always like, asked my attorneys. is like, uh, did she have to leave? Like, did she have to do anything at work? Cause that was one thing. So she always told me that was her dream job. So. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? What did she mean? Oh, uh, like, the, get, like an oil company in Anadarko is like, you know, I mean, unless you're working for like BP or like kind of or something. Oh, I see what you're saying. And it goes like in the big leagues. Yeah. Can I ask kind of a mm. tough question? Mm. Um, did you love her? I felt like it was true. Yeah, I think so too. I think it was the same from her. Yeah. Um, tell us about the time you spent. I mean, it felt like it was, you know, I think like when you say like more, more like a shy guy, it's kind of like I never like been perceived by anybody before. It's kind of like I was the one, you know, 
find it too, because like when me and Shanann met, it was like, you know, she was always like pushing me away, kind of like, you know. She was sick for a while, right? Oh uh, yeah, she had, yeah, she was, uh, she had just got diagnosed with lupus, and she was on like a bunch of different medications and stuff, and <laughs> um, it was, like, I guess I wish one of her type. And you weren't her type? I, I wasn't her type, because okay. like, she, she, she told me like, when, I, when, I, when she first, because we had met. She told you that? <laughs> yeah. You're not yeah. I remember you telling me that. <laughs> yeah, it was like, you know, when we first met, like, it was at a movie theater, and my uh, cousin's ex-wife said us up. You were dressed like shit, weren't you? <laughs> I didn't. I, I think didn't, that's what you told me. Yeah, I didn't know, like, that. Before we any games. So she was fancy, well, was and he was in, cool. like, shorts and tennis shoes or something, like, right? Tennis shoes, and, like, I should have known the doorman, you know, was in a suit, and I was just like, oh, this isn't good. And, like, was when it she, a theater? It was a fancy theater, right? It was kinda? in Charlotte. It was called the Epicenter, and apparently it, they give you, like, champagne and all kinds oh, of stuff. Oh, oh, this is a fancy date night theater. Yeah. Yeah. I think he came, theater. I think he came like he was going to a... Like I was Cinemax, like, 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 uh, like I was going to a bar, like an AMC, like a white theater. <laughs> no, it was like, like you like most watch the normal normal movie, but like you can like drink champagne and yeah. like have like you know a Jack and Coke inside the theater and just yeah. sit there and just whatever. But like uh, yeah, so when she first saw me, she was like, I should probably just turn and talk, talk to the bartender a little more. And like, no, I'm not like I'm not, I'm not here to meet. But yeah, like it was, I was like persistent trying to pursue something. I, I liked her mm-hmm. and. Uh, even, even like even on the first day, like I couldn't even eat anything. Really, I was just like, "Was you so nervous?" Uh, yeah, really. Yeah, I was. Just, and she was just like, you know, chowing down. And she was like, "You're like a bird." I'm like, oh, "That's fine." And she talked to my parents like, you know, months later. She's like, "This guy just never ate." And like, "This guy eats like the trash disposal, the trash disposal." I'm like, no, that wasn't not around me. I was like, "Well, I'm just nervous." <laughs> and I was just like, I was always like shaking and everything. But um, yeah, it was, I was always pursuing her, and then just like um. Finally, I just, I grew on to her, like, you know, I would always, like, like, with her medications and stuff, I would always, like, she had, like, eight bottles of medications, so I would always get, like, her day and nights and kind of, like, put them all in that little, you know, flip open the pill box, you know, all that kind of stuff, and, you know, I would always, you know, be around her. I even went to her colonoscopy, but she said after that, she knew that was, like, a, kind of a keeper. It's like, you know, like, who goes to a colonoscopy after two months with somebody? Right. That's but, a little soon. <laughs> <laughs> well, she asked if she needed a ride. I'm like, yeah. She's like, you want to go to the hospital? I'm like, sure, why not? Yeah. Like, I even sat with her while she drank that nasty stuff all day. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh <okay. laughs> or she's in the bathroom That's all a day. good test. <laughs> <laughs> that, that clear stuff that's not really, that doesn't really taste clear. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, it was, I mean, it felt like a great, it was a great relationship. Everything was, everything was great. Now you're yeah. talking about with... Kessinger? No, with uh, Tom Elch and, and um, like, first first year, you know, like, you know, my parents never, I don't, I don't know, my mom was always kind of hesitant. Why? I, I was the baby, I guess, I never, but I never had a girlfriend in high school, so it's kind of oh. like, she never, like, really saw me, like. Oh, like, interesting. So she's kind of watching her baby walk out a little bit. Yeah, because I, I turned 18, I graduated, I never moved back. Okay. That, that at home. So and my sister moved back and forth. <laughs> How old were you when you met Shanann? I was twenty. I was twenty ten. So okay. So no serious mm-hmm. girlfriends before that. Not nothing more than six months or so. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there was there was a, there was some girls here and there, but just nothing more than like I, the last girlfriend I had before Shanann, she was just I actually got divorced, and I should should never did that. But it was more of like a, I was kind of like helping her get through her divorce. It seemed like mm-hmm. she went off to somebody else. I'm like, oh. No, you're the rebound guy. The rebound guy, mm. pretty much. But you know, that's how it goes. Would you say that in your relationships with women, um, it seems to me, and you tell me if I'm wrong, it seems to me like you're attracting maybe a more dominant personality. It seems like it because I'm more of the just reserved. I mean, I just kind of like go with the flow type. Yeah. But then like Shan usually made all the decisions. Yeah. You like so. I get that. I'm the same. Yeah. I don't know what it is. Yeah, I don't think that's right with you, but. <laughs> So then, and I know it's hard to keep bouncing back and forth, but, and, and one of the reasons we're here is we just keep telling ourselves, Chris just does not fit the mold. Chris does not. No. Like it's just, it just blows us away what happened, right? And so we will do a little bit of bouncing back and forth, and that's really just to get to know you a little bit better. Because we never really got that chance, did we? Um, we were talking about twice. Yeah. Met you once. Yeah. Probably like three or four. I remember three or four times, probably. So then with, do you call her Nikki or Nicole? I, I would call her Nikki. Okay. I know. 
There's so many Nikki's and Nicole's in this. Right. There is. Cool. I got confused. So we'll call her Nikki. Okay. Um, so then with Nikki, was it different? It just seemed like I was more in control, seemingly, and that never happened. Like she'd actually like ask me like like my opinion on a lot of things, it's like what I wanted to do, and just kind of like. Hey. That was new, wasn't it? Very new. Oh, that's fascinating to me. And so, did it feel more like an equal partnership, or? It seemed like it. Yeah. Okay. So then, when it was date night, would you guys talk about it? Would you ask to go somewhere? Or would she say, "I want to go somewhere"? Was it? I, you know, the first time we went out, it was to a movie over at the orchard, about three fourths mm -hmm. over there. And you know, I asked her, like, hey, you want to go see this movie? And like, but yeah, I'm like, okay, cool. And we just we got there, it was sold out. And, you know, normally you probably just have to, you know, just wait two hours, like, no, just go home. But now she just wanted to walk around and just talk. I'm like, okay. Oh, wow. So that was, that was different. And, you know, I think she wanted to go to the car museum, Shelby Museum in Boulder. I've never been there. And I was That's like, right up your alley. Oh, yeah. I, I was just like, that was awesome just to walk around cars for like an hour or so. And then, you know, drag race in Andamere. Okay. And I haven't been to a drag race since 2008. And that was in Charlotte. Okay. So like that was a lane drag strip over there. And it's like the NHRA, the Top Fuel, mm -hmm. my car stuff like me and my dad used to grow up and yeah. go there like all the time. <laughs> and then like, uh, we went to camping in uh sand dunes national park mm -hmm. and i had never i would never been camping i always wanted to do it i thought it was she done it like countless times I oh guess. really okay so, she's outdoorsy yes okay yeah she she's i guess she every time like she needed to clear her head she just go by herself go somewhere oh else. Yeah. so she's a completely new type of uh person and relationship yeah okay all right um what were you thinking this whole time like i did in the back of my head, I was just telling myself, what are you doing? Like, you know, every time, you know, I, I open up my phone, I can see pictures, like, of my wife and my kids, and it's like, what am I doing? And then, like, every time I was with her, it seemed like, I didn't think. It seemed like it was like a, like a blinder that was in my face. Oh. And it was, like, every time I look back on it, like, you know, like, I have pictures of my wife and kids and myself, and, like, every night, you know, or every morning, every night, you know, I just you know, talk to them, you know, say, like, like I have, like, this book. Uh, I used to read for Cece, and I remember that book, so I read that to, to them, like, every night. And, like, there's some scripture and stuff that I read to them, so I just try to, you know, just try to think back. Like, I wish, <laughs> I just, like, I wish that blinder wasn't on my head, right in my eyes. That would have seen what was going on. Like, you know, I was having, everybody said, oh, you're just out, out there having fun while your kids, you know, are... It's a wife for on vacation. I'm just like, no, it wasn't like that. But it seemed like that's what it looks like when, you know, when you're going, you know, you're going to camping, going to drag race, going all the other stuff that you have fun doing, but you're with somebody else. It's not your family. It didn't seem right. Yeah. You know, all with her, it just didn't seem like I didn't see that anymore. Yeah. I was there at her house pretty much every night. So it was like I didn't have that time at home just to really think about mm -hmm. anything. Literally, I didn't, like, I was only at home from, like, when I got home from work, I worked out, I ate dinner, and then I went over to her house. Like, I was never, I never slept in my house, like, the whole month of July. Now, talk me through that, though. Mm -hmm. When you said you went home and then you were at her house, was that while Chanel was gone? Yes. Oh, okay. So you weren't even at your house. No. This all happened so quickly, didn't it? It, it was insane. Like, I didn't, like, she even told me, like, she was never, in, like, a normal relationship. She would never have somebody over at her house, like, more than, like, once or twice a week. But she yeah. felt like she wanted me over there. Yeah. She said she felt comfortable over there. Yeah. So it was just, like, that's what was different. Like, she wanted me over there. But I just wish that all that would go away. I just wish I had almost, like, a... I know it's hard to, I know it's wrong to say I wish I'd never met somebody, but I wish I'd, you know, maybe met her at work and, and just get it that way. I think if we had a time machine, mm -hmm. I don't think this would happen again. Sure. Because some people, when this happens, you're like, well, if it wasn't this time, it would have been next time, or it would have been the next time. It just wouldn't have happened with you, would it? Mm -hmm. And it happened so quickly that you tell me if I'm wrong, you're not the type of guy to take control sometimes when you need to. Yeah, it seems like that's just what happened. 
I didn't I didn't take control of the situation. It's just like the situation controlled me. Right, it just happened. No, I get that, man. I'm somewhat passive myself, and it's like, you know, there are situations where I'm like, well, why did I let that keep going? You know? Yeah. I don't know why. It was like, it was like a roller coaster ride that I just kept punching and taking on. And never yeah. get up. Can we talk about the hardest subject? It's so when we were talking, the last time we talked, um, the last thing we talked about was where the girls were, but we never really got to talk about that night. What happened? So, nothing really happened that night, that morning. Yeah. You know, me and Shannon, she got home like at o'clock. And, uh, you know, I felt her get in the bed. And I just felt like I didn't really, didn't really, I just made sure I looked my phone at 2 o'clock and make sure she's okay, right. she's in there. And I could kind of feel her kind of stirring around a little bit. And, uh, she, I, just had a feeling that she knew like what was going on. I mean, obviously, I didn't just, like a, a, an NRO gift card, you know, that I got, and I used my actual credit card, and I, I kind of just felt like something she knew what was going on. And she uh, she started rubbing her hand on me, and we ended up having sex. But um, uh, I guess that was more like a test. Oh, I, I would have thought. Interesting. Okay. That makes yeah, because when we talked. Uh, when I woke up next, or later on in the morning, like, you know, I I pretty much, you know, told her, like, you know, I didn't think it was going to work anymore. And she was like, what happened? What was last night? You know, mm-hmm. after that, that test, after I've gone through everything in my head. That makes sense. And she just told me, you know, like, to get off of her. It's like, I knew, some, I knew there was somebody else. I knew there was somebody else. And somebody else. I couldn't bring it. I couldn't just say yes. There is somebody else, but then it's like never gonna see the kid again. Never gonna see them again. Get off me! Don't hurt me. And then, is that what you said? Well, because like when I climbed in bed, I was pretty much like on top, pretty much like straddling her. Okay. She thought I was gonna like, you know, hurt her or her baby or something. Because she knew that, like, you know, I, something happened. I thought I was just trying to, you know, just check out or something. Right. I know it's hard, but do you mind if we talk just a tiny bit deeper about that? So, she comes home, uh, you know, she touches and you guys have sex. It seems like she's doing her test, which I understand. Um, sounds like you do, too. I'm sure, like, you know, Nikki or, or I mean, yeah, Bill Atkinson or Cassie probably told her. That's what I was thinking, right? They talked about it during that whole weekend. More than like that. That's my parents told me there was, like, a I'm going through, like, text messages. It's, like, all, like, pretty much they all kind of told her with somebody else. So, yeah. And she spent a lot of time with the gals. That's what they did probably all weekend is talk about it, give her advice. I think that's what we found, mm-hmm. from, right? Yeah. Okay. So she comes home. Uh, you guys have sex. And then did you fall asleep between then and going to work? Yes. Okay. So then at some point, does she wake you up or did he wake you up for work? Not a lot more. Oh, okay. And you're going to work out. But then that's when she started talking, wanted to talk more. She was pretty mad. Okay. Yeah, she, I mean, it was... I had already kind of do that. Uh, using that credit card, it was kind of do it. Was that intentional? Yeah. I had no other way to do it. Oh. I, like, you know, I had, I used, like, because I got these anarcho gift cards from, like, you know, you know, doing good stuff at work and yeah. stuff like that. And I had used them all. Oh. Well, was was part of you just like, I screw it, whatever, I don't care. I'm using this card. I, I, I was, I, Part of me just wants to say, Nikki, can you pay for this? But I just, I don't know. Yeah. Even, I think, um, my, my attorney said she even knows I used a different card, like a blue card. Oh, you know, mm-hmm. maybe she thought, you know, like I felt comfortable enough to see bank account or something. But, you know. And I told her I was going to Iraq, and I told you, I told you guys. Yeah. It was just like, you know, it, even, it felt like, you know, like looking back at everything, like, like reading the scripture more and more now, I can see like you know 
God told, like, gave me opportunities to get out. Like, even my friend Jeremy uh, Lindstrom, he even invited me to, he could, like, it was his daughter that came and watched the kids on Saturday, that Saturday night. And he was like, hey, you said we're going to a Rocky game. You want to go to me with the Bronco game and watch the Arizona Cardinals? And, like, in my mind, it was like, you know, go. Just, uh, just, yeah, just, just say, hey, I, I, can't, I can't find a babysitter. Right. <laughs> Nikki. Yeah. And maybe that would have been like, you know, you know, like a light switch in my head goes off, light switch in her head goes mm -hmm. off, maybe it just like goes a different direction. Mm -hmm. That was kind of like my last like opportunity to kind of get out. But I wish I would have said, yeah, let's go. <laughs> yeah. And I think that would have just put me on a different trajectory. So then, Shanann, did she actually say you're never going to see the kids again? She said that to me before. Yeah. That's yeah. kind of hard to hear. Yeah, because she said to me before she went to Arizona. Because, like, I wasn't really sitting in the bedroom. I was sitting on the couch or in the basement bed or something. And, like, she had slammed the door. You're never going to see the kids again. Did she get fiery like that? Only once in our entire relationship I've ever seen her like that way. Yeah. And that was the a time before, or was that on the night that it happened? No, it was, uh... Right back in North Carolina. Oh. It was one, it's like one of those, it was just a fiery argument that yeah. I never, like, I never raised my voice to her or anything. And, like, you know, I, like, I just got mad and I slammed the door and she was like, ow. And I'm like, just like, is that when you were in North Carolina that last week? No, it was like, like previous to that. This is like 2010, 2011. Oh. It was like early, early, early. Okay. And her old house. Before kids. Yes. Were you dating or were you married at that point? Dating. Oh. Yeah, it was just like, I, I, I don't remember what it was about. I think some, I think some girl maybe texted me like from my past or something and like, I was just like, this. And she was like, don't have that happen again. And I'm just like, I can't have friends. Right. They're females. Like, right. I don't even talk to this woman anymore. Right. And I was just like, yeah. Nope. Was she fiery? Did she have that Italian blood that her mom has? Lord, yes. <laughs> <laughs> was she always like that, or was she? Uh, did she snap at things? Uh, it's, she would snap at me, but you could tell, like you know, something, something really irked her a little bit. Yeah, it, was, it would come out zero to a hundred type thing, or what? Uh, yeah, zero to like, yeah, two hundred. Oh, interesting. <laughs> she's she's. She gets acclimated about something. She's like, all right, this is going to happen. Well, that's why she was probably so successful at Thrive, right? Oh, yeah, like she had done yeah. a couple other, like, direct sales businesses, but this one was just, like, it was different. Why? This one, like, uh, cause I think she had done, like, uh, Origami Owl and, like, something called, like, uh, It Works. And then, like, uh, other, 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 a couple other things, some bags and stuff like that. Stuff like that with the supplement stuff, it just because it worked with her, mm -hmm. it worked with me. She's like, okay, I can kind of like use this. I was like, all right, this is what's doing for us. Yeah. And then like after a little while, like she could see how like people are above her, how it was helping them, and then it was just like trickle down effect. Mm -hmm. And it was like a good system about like you know commission wise and everything, and everything was just she could use all the business. IQ she has from running those cell phone shops mm -hmm. and from the uh, dirty soft custom shops and all that. I mean, she, she business minded. Yeah. She knows how to do accounting book like yeah. in the back of her hands. But all just like fell into place with all that. So then on that night, was it just a new type of fight? It was, it was, it was never it was, had or what? It was, what happened? Yeah, it was a totally different type of fight. It was, you know, it was, it felt like. I don't know, it was more anger than, than anything else. Like, there was emotion to it at first, and then it just felt like it was just anger. It was just like, you know, like, like there was no love there. It was kind of like what we were saying, what she was saying, it was just like, it's almost like we knew, like, something was combating at, at, at each other. We didn't know, like, it, was, it wasn't ourselves. Really? Anger from you or anger from her? I think it was more anger from me and more, like, desperation from her. To, if she wanted it. Yeah. Yeah, she knew. You know, if something was right, like, you know, like, when the whole thing with my parents happened with the, somebody, my parents called them Nutgate. What happened? Nutgate. 
What's that? The peanut. The peanut. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, with uh, her family. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah pistachio yeah. ice cream or whatever. Yeah. yeah they, they, they they it I, I haven't heard that. I heard that either. Yeah. I guess what people were calling it. Okay. But uh, that was like another out. Like you know, maybe I could have just like stopped everything and just kind of concentrated on helping like whatever happened there. Because okay. like, Shan had a story, my mom had a story. You know, whatever happened, I probably asked my ten-year-old nephew probably can tell me what actually happened. Well, and they both have their feelings for good reasons, and they both didn't see it the other person's way. And yeah, and like maybe I, cause I could, I didn't talk to my parents from then on. Until like August sixth, and like you know, my dad took that whole week off. You didn't talk to your parents from then on. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Because yeah, like, Janelle was like, "Do not talk to them. Do not call them. Do not do anything." Is that what she said? Yeah. And um, the uh, Cece's birthday was seventeenth, but I think the actual birthday party was like a couple days after. In August. July. July. Yeah. And uh, like my my mom, or my dad was gonna go. But then there was like a post on Facebook about, you know, allergies and stuff like that. Shenanda made him. And I was like, no, I just can't, can't do it anymore. Just like, just... He, per- he perceived that as her taking a shot type thing? Yeah. Okay. She always says she never, you know, put those posts uh, directed at anybody. But I, she, she had a method. If you read them, you know who she's yeah. talking about. She had a method to the madness <clears throat> and see it. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, it's, I wish I could have just took more time just to fix that. Cause like I was, like I wanted my parents to be involved. Like since you know like the whole wedding thing, and then up to that, it was like you know my mom, and my sister were always like you know, combating with Shan, Shan combating with them. Mm-hmm. My dad was always cool. He's just like me. He's just like you know go with flow. Like I just want everybody to get along. I do. She expands. I loved your dad. Donnie's the best, mm-hmm. isn't he? I so, loved your dad. I'm sorry. Keep going. That's cool. Um, I just wish I could have. When we were in, uh, we were at the beach, in August. Like my dad was supposed to let's take to the whole week off just so we could see the kids and like uh, see me. And, like we have a cookout at my sister's house or something. And then, but we just pretty much spent five days at the beach. Shannon had like booked it, so like you know, I mean, I, I didn't. I don't say like punishment for them not to see the kids, but like I wanted them to see it, mm-hmm. see them. I, was, I wish I could fix it all, fix all that. I even like when I was at the beach, I told Shanann that it was more like what was going on was more of like I feel like, you know, because my dad's not here, I feel like I've lost like something in my life. I haven't talked to him for two weeks. Mm-hmm. I haven't seen see the kids for two weeks, you know, FaceTime or anything. Mm-hmm. And I wanted them to be able to have that relationship. And they, she was pretty much gung ho and like she tried to help my daughter by giving her. I was like, I don't think she gave to him. <laughs> and that was that her stance is that your mom put that put something in front of Zizi, like to kill her or no, just just, to... just like, like didn't care, like like didn't pay attention. She she thinks that allergies and like this state of age is like people think oh you're like fine. it's made up like, kind of thing. Yeah, he'll be fine. He'll just have a rash. He'll be fine. Mm-hmm. I've seen Zizi, you know, like the first time we'll seen a picture of when he had a cashew the first time. It wasn't good. And then she had a kiwi the second time, and then the same thing happened. And um, I know it's real. Do you know it's serious? Yeah. Yeah, it's not like it wasn't like her throat like closed up, but she broke out in this full body rash. It looked really mm. crazy looking, and luckily, like you know, nothing, nothing with her throat like happened. But um. So did that make you angry to at your mom for doing that? Yeah, I mean, I just like mom, you just gotta. I told her you need to think, you need to like you know pay attention. Just because another kid can have something doesn't mean another kid can have something. Because like when we were at that birthday party at Jeremy's that Sunday. You know, they had this cake there. Like, Bella, Bella wanted it so bad. I'm like, I can't give it to you because Cece can't have it. She was like, yeah, okay. And all the other kids were like, if she, they can't have the cake. You know, they're like, I just kind of took them off and gave them some, like, uh, like uh, one of those frozen pops or mm-hmm. something. But, mm-hmm. you know, it's just like she had to learn that just because one kid can have something and there's another kid that can't have it for a legitimate reason, couldn't have done it. But, you know, that's the kind of talk I had with her. Shannon called me, I think it was maybe like middle of July or something when she told me all this had happened. Mm-hmm. That's when I called my mom and talked to them for a while, and then they were just like, you know, they just couldn't deal with her anymore. And it's kind of like, you know, it like flipped out. Mm-hmm. My nephew told Bella to go hide behind 
the curtain because I don't think your mom was going to let you come over here again or something like that. Aww. So it got heated. Oh, they were. It was bad. Really? Yeah, they, it was. It was like a last straw. No. Like in the same room or over the phone? No, they were at, at the. At they were, and so they were my, really my mom's house. Yeah, because CC and Bella and my niece and nephew were there. Okay. How did so Shanann find out about the ice cream thing? Because uh, Shanann was there, and um, I guess they were all sitting uh, on this couch. It was kind of like a U. And my niece went into the kitchen, and she knew where the ice cream was. She'd um, been there. So it's not like your mom gave it to her? Like, she got oh, no, her no, own she, ice cream? Yeah, she went in the freezer, got it, went out, and we stopped beside CC and started eating. So, but, like, it's just a matter of, like, CC could go, like, right. right, like that. I don't, I don't know what would happen if she just got it on her hand, right? But like I know on like the brick test you know, mm-hmm. on, the, on the back, it's like a blow. Up. Mm-hmm. So, so would they stay in there at your parents' house during that time? Cause yeah, you- it was. Um, so they would go from my uh, from Sandy and Frank's house yeah. for like a few days or five days, and then go to my mom and dad's house yeah. for a couple of days and come okay. back and forth. So it happened during that time. Mm-hmm. They were there, yeah. Okay. yeah. So. There were so many things that happened, weren't there? They just were little tiny ingredients to this yeah, recipe. Not, yeah, nothing like... And that's crazy. I mean, it's just so many things just didn't go your way. Everything was like, a, like somebody was stirring a pot, and it was just... Yeah. Was exactly what it was like. So then... I know I keep bringing it up. Can you walk me through the, just the last few minutes before Shenandai? It was pretty much just... I had gotten dressed for work, and then, like, we started talking. Did she come to you? No, I was, I was just right there in bed. Oh, just, okay. Yeah. So I was just like, I got my blue shirt on, and I'm like, you ready to go? I was ready to go. And was she asleep, or did, did you have to wake her up to finish your conversation? Or? I would wake her up, because, like, she, she, she got on, like, 2 o'clock, so she was she pretty much out of it. But I never knew, like, if like if her plane got delayed. Someone, someone always told me, like, she just, like, sat around with Cold, just like talk for a while and then came home. Yeah, it was a, it was a light. Yeah, but uh, um, yeah, when she came home and everything, but yeah, like I, I, I woke her up to talk. To her. Oh, okay. Yeah. And is that because it was just eating at your? Brain? Yeah, like I, I knew, like you know, something like did something go right with me? So no, no, like she knew. I'm, I just, I just, knew. I just felt like maybe like. Maybe the kids weren't going to be there when I got home that day. Oh, interesting. Now, um, I don't mean to offend, but I have to ask, is that really the truth? I really felt like they, was, they weren't going to be there when I got home. Oh. And like so, she would take them somewhere? No, I just, I, just, I just felt like either maybe I wouldn't go home, maybe they weren't going to be there, or I wouldn't be allowed in. I think. I think I saw some text messages where Shania talked about... Um, that she would take the kids to another state or something because she couldn't, wouldn't be able to afford to live in Colorado or something. Did she say that kind of stuff to you, or yeah. what did she say about that? She said she couldn't afford to live in Colorado by, on her own, and that uh, I told her, like, well, try it, and she pretty much makes the same amount I do. Yeah. But uh, she said she wouldn't, she wouldn't want to try because, you know, Colorado just, the price of living there was a lot higher than North Carolina. And just so, just so I'm clear, you thought maybe she was, she, in your mind, you thought maybe she would take the kids somewhere else or, like, lock you out of the house or... Or just, like, you know, I, I wouldn't want to make a scene, like, you know, trying to, like, pound on the door, trying to get her or something like that. But, mm-hmm. like, I just felt like, you know, that, that was what I did on Sunday. It was kind of like Saturday night. It was kind of like the last draw. I like going out with somebody and I don't have to look at the account card and just, like, not trying to hide it. So, so walk me through it, though, because she comes home... She touches you, you guys have sex, you fall asleep, then you wake up for work, all natural, all, you know, a normal day's work type thing. Yeah. What was it that made you think, I just can't do this anymore, I have to talk to her? I it was eating away at me, like, I yeah. knew, like, something, I knew everything that I did, like, I know, like, when I was with Nikki, it was different, like, I wasn't even, like, in the realm of, I'm a dad, I'm a type thing. Oh. And then, like... Like I, like I was saying, when I'm never at home, like, sleeping in my own bed. Like, I have no, like, concept of that anymore. Interesting. It so in your of, mind and heart, you can live, moved on. Like, it was, it just, it kind of felt like if I wasn't at home, like, I didn't think about it. 
almost because like I, if I wasn't sleeping on my own, but like I think there was one at one point like Nikki had gone to the mountains with her friends for like a few days, like end of June, first part of July, and then like you know that part, you know, obviously, obviously at home, but like from that whole month of July on, it was like I was never at home. Mm-hmm. Like I never had all those reminders. Around. Never had, you know, like every time my wife would call me, I would be at. Oh, while she was in North Carolina? Yeah. Okay. And I would, like, you know, walk outside and talk to her, like, when I was next to the car or something like that. Uh-huh. I would never be at home looking, like, just have all these pictures around me, just being in the same bed, you know, seeing my kid in bed, seeing everything that, you know, that we built for less. And so. Did you just want to once and for all get it out in the open? I just wanted to just tell her how I was feeling at that point in time. Like, I didn't feel like me and her were compatible anymore. Yeah. I honestly, I didn't feel like that because what was going on with Nikki, it, just, it was new. It was new. Right. Absolutely. Anything that's new always feels better than the old. Yes. And you were you probably, probably bitten by the love bug. Yeah. It, that's it, how a lot of therapists talk about it. Yeah. It was just like... I never felt that. I mean, even like with new relationships in the past, like it always feels different, like you know, the first couple of weeks, and then you know. But it just with some of Nikki felt different. I don't know what it was. Maybe it was just like you said, like you know, I was more in control, and like it was more of like maybe more of me coming out. Because mm-hmm. Nan always said, like it always seemed I was more myself around other people, like you know, her cousin Cody, like you know, like. She, uh, Cody lived or came up and visited us for a little bit while we were in Colorado for a little while. And mm-hmm. Cody always talked about, he like, called Chris is so funny. Chris is like, Shannon would always like, oh, you're never like that with me. It's like, you know, maybe I always felt nervous about you. There's only so much oxygen in the room, right? I say I this to some people when dominant personalities, mm-hmm. you know? I just always felt nervous. I always felt like I was, you know, never could actually just. Myself, right? Nikki, I was myself like all the time. Well, and it seems as though, and again, it's hard to talk about, and you tell me if I'm wrong, but it also seems, uh, is it accurate to say that sexually you were able to say, Nikki, this is what I would like, this is what I'm into, or blah blah blah, and maybe not what you am. No, Nikki just wanted, I mean, she wanted what she wanted, she wanted to do it pretty much all the time. I was just like, okay, mm-hmm. fine with me, okay, you know, which and it was just like. Like, hey, sometimes it happened, sometimes it didn't, but uh, that wasn't that wasn't the case as far as that way. It wasn't that was, that was, that was me. I was just one myself. I could like just not think about what I was gonna say or plan what I was gonna say or not say something stupid or something. But, right. A little bit of freedom. Yeah. Can I ask you something about that morning that you had sex with Shanann? Did you feel at all like maybe you were kinda of cheating on Nikki by doing that? I felt strange. I felt like, you know, the first time I was with Nikki, I felt weird. First time, like, sure. and then the last time I was with Shannon, I felt totally strange. I was just like, I, I didn't know who I was. I didn't know who I had become. I did I felt like I had become people I see on TV, and that did not feel right with me. I just, I didn't know. I didn't know what had happened to me. Mm-hmm. So I, Nikki even asked me, like, Are you? Have you done this before? Have you go straight away? I'm like, I've never even thought about it. It's like, what's what's different? It's like. I guess it's just you that's different. I've just never actually, like, like I've seen girls smile at me before. I've never done anything about it with her. It was just like, it's like she had a leash on me and she tugged me away. Mm-hmm. As soon as she walked, I'm like, heck, I don't know what's going on. So. Well, and Tammy brings up a very good point. I wonder if that last time with Shanann having sex had a somewhat of a role in you thinking, I, I, I got to do something. I got to say something. We got to have a talk. Something's got to change. Is that I accurate? Yeah, I just I felt like it was like maybe like a trigger point or something like like you hit the push button on a on a bomb and it just blows up. Right. There's something in my head was just like something was like something was hurt. Like I had to say something. Okay. So then, exactly what did you say and what happened? So when I woke her up, and it's like, hey, we just gotta gotta talk. Okay. And I just like I told her. I don't feel compatible. I don't feel like this is going to work. I just, you know, I don't want to, like, can we cancel the trip to Aspen? Because she had booked a trip that week. Oh. Go to, like, 
mystery four star luxury hotel or something. Mm -hmm. Is the two of you or the whole family? Just me and her. Okay. She had uh, man the fair, didn't watch the kids that week that weekend. Or okay. And um, I was just like, can we cancel that? Can we like do something like? That? What I remember, I even said, can we move to Brighton <laughs> just to get away from like this house? Oh. But like, I'm not sure if that was like. Like in the beginning or the end of part of the conversation or whatnot. That conversation was so many different ways. Like they had gone from like staying together and not staying together to just like all of the above. Okay. So this is half an hour, an hour or what? Uh, definitely not more than half an hour. I don't think. Okay. I don't think. Are you crying? Is she crying? Yeah, it's it's <laughs> back and forth. It's like, you know, she's, she's got, you know, mascara. She didn't wash her face when she got home. She had makeup on still, so mascara was running all over her and stuff like that. And it was and nothing, nothing about that conversation. I just wish I could take all of that and just be the whole naked thing back. Every so then when did it turn? As far as that conversation, mm -hmm. just at the end when I was telling her, like, I, I told her I didn't love her anymore. Um, what happened? She told me to get off her. And then I like, okay. Did you say she said something like that you were hurting the baby or something? Yeah, that was before that. Because, like, when I was... Straddling her, it was kind of like around her waist type deal. Why did you get on her like that? I just when we got off when we got on the bed. That's when I got on. Is that so she would listen to you? Well, I mean, she could probably listen to me just laying beside her, but I got on top of her. Mm -hmm. And every time I think about it, I'm just like, did I know I was going to do that before I got on top of her? Really? That's an interesting thought, Chris. Mm -hmm. You don't know if you do. It's like the whole, everything that happened that morning, I just don't, I don't know, like, I, I try to go back in my head, I'm just like, I didn't want to do this, but I did it. Everything just kind of like... Felt like you had to? It just felt like it was... I, I don't even want to say it felt like I had to, it just felt like there was already something in my mind that was implanted that I was going to do it, and I woke up that morning, it was going to happen, and I had no control of it. You never thought about it before? It was just like I don't want like when like like just like in the sentencing hearing that the prosecutor said it takes two to four minutes or something like that to happen. Like why why can't I just let go? Just let was go. it feeling like it was in motion and you just couldn't stop it? Yeah, it was just like I don't even want to know what what she saw when she looked back at me. Did you look at her? What was she doing? Fighting. Why do you think she wasn't fighting? I don't know. It's, uh, maybe she was praying. Maybe she was just. I read, read the Bible. It said, you know, like, you know, uh, the scripture says, don't uh, uh, forgive these people for they do not know what they do. Mm -hmm. um, maybe she was saying that. I don't know what she was saying in her head, but she. You know, like. When you guys told me, like, take off your shirt and stuff, check for defensive wounds, and, like, you know, there wasn't going to be any. I, mean, I don't know why. So she didn't grab, could she grab your arms, I, or were her arms just, pinned down, or? I don't, I, not that I remember. I don't think so. I mean, I, I don't think, like, I moved toward my knees or, or around her arms or anything, but it was just kind of like when I got on top of her, we, we started talking, and was, that was it. <laughs> it's kind of like in my head. Or like in the back of my head, that was going to happen, and just like at the end of the conversation, it was just like that's what. Mm -hmm. I just wish I could have let go. Did it seem like it was that long, two to four minutes? How long did it seem for you? Almost kind of felt like it was felt like it was longer almost because it felt like time was standing still. It's kind of like I just saw my life disappearing before my eyes, but it just like I couldn't let go. It was like somebody else, like like if you picture somebody else around you, holding your hands, holding you, keep you from not, not letting go. At some point there was a statement about rage. Do you feel like you're in a rage at that point? How do you, uh, how that's do the you... only way I can describe it, honestly. Snap. Something. I, mean, I, don't, I know, I guess my attorney had said like some, you know, you know, strangulation is more of like a it's just intimate because you're right in there, yeah. using your own hands. 
it's a lot different than someone standing across the room and you shooting them or something like that. So. I just felt like somebody was like behind me, just like. I just couldn't let go. It's interesting to me because there was a lot of things in your life that were like that, right? Where you're just like maybe felt out of control or maybe felt like I don't know why I couldn't stick, take a step back or you know. Like even when you said when your buddy was like a sort of football game, you wanted to say yes, he's good. Yeah, I wanted to. Like, I, I never been. I've been to a football game in North Carolina, so I was just like, yeah, sure. But I wanted to say that. Yeah. I wanted to text him. Hey, you no, know, it fell through. Can't go. Yeah. So then what? Just, um, just after you know, Shanann was like, the week was out, she was gone, and was like I, I didn't know what. What was going on? Like it was like a traumatic I don't know what you call it, traumatic event type mm-hmm. everything and like I was shaking. I didn't know what had happened. I didn't know I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what I had done. I still wasn't in that right state of mind. I don't think like like I was in control of what I could think or what I could do at that point in time. Like most people say, like, why don't you just call nine one one? Why I was like, unless you're in that situation, you don't you don't, don't know. You don't know what you would have done. Mm-hmm. It's easy to play Monday morning quarterback. Mm-hmm. I agree with that. Like, like you said, if somebody shoots somebody, you don't know what they're going through their mind at that point in time. Mm-hmm. You don't know what you'd have done. So what happened next? Bella came in. Is that what happened? Bella came in. What she said? Oh. Um, Did she hear something? Is that what she came Obviously, in? I think. Okay. What did you tell me? So good. And then, did that happen with Bella right in that room? Not proper. What happened? She, just, she walked in as she thought, you know, she was... Mm-hmm. Did you take her back to her room? Put the hand in that sheet down the site. Okay. Then what? Carried her downstairs and back my truck up. At that point, were the girls still there? Okay. Then Shanann's in the truck. Then went back to the house. You got her by acting the truck. Was Bella first or was Cece first? And the truck? Yeah, uh, I'm sorry. So Shanann was first. And then Bella was next. Was Bella alive when you put it, when you guys got in the truck? Oh, okay. What happened? Pulled back up. Yeah? It's just, I don't really want to talk about this part. Honestly. Okay. Those are my kids. But baby, I just talked to him every night. I hope this could happen. Every time I see pictures of him, I don't know how this could happen. Being a dad was the best part of my life. I took it all away. I think that's the hardest part for us, Chris, is we see those videos. We see that love that you had for your girls. Like, it's obvious to us. And even to us, we it's hard for us to understand how a dad who's given piggyback rides and you know, making snacks and watching princess movies and those kinds of things. Um, how you get to that point, you know? I don't know. Like I said, it was just like something else was controlling me that day. I had no control over what I was, like, to fight back. Yeah. Like when that prosecutor said it fell a bit of tongue. Like, repeatedly, I just, I just want to just bang my head up against the wall. So you put... Shanann in the truck, and then you put the two girls in the truck? Were they just sitting in their car seats? Or or I guess they didn't probably have car no, seats they, in your no, truck, no, did no, they? No, they was sitting in the back, with the, like in that, that bench seat. So Shanann was back there too? She was on the right? floor. What did they say about Shanann being on the floor? Mommy, okay. What did you tell them? She'll be fine. Did you have your their stuff with them? Like their toys and their blankets and stuff? They had, they, had some, they had something with them that they carried. One of them, I think, had, I think Cece and Bella had like a blanket or something with them. Mm-hmm. Like a pink, a pink blanket. Or... What about the dog? I think one of them had a dog, right? That talked or the dog? Yeah, Cece. Yeah, yeah, one of them had like a little barking dog. Was that with you too? Do you know? I think it was. It's uh, uh, hard to remember. Like yeah. if they had like a big blanket, small blanket. So... I think I saw um, on the video that you put a gas can or something in the back of your truck. Mm-hmm. Is that right? Did you have different plans was, when you put that in there? 
I don't know what was going through my head. I felt like I, maybe I could just get rid of myself at the same time if I was doing all this. Yeah. You should think about that. What did you think about that? I didn't feel like I deserved to live after what happened. Was there any thought to um, the whole family going away that day, to include you? After everything that happened, that's the definite thought. Yeah. See, it's interesting to me. Um, we had all kind of wondered if there was a point when you were all together, and if you were all going to pass together. That, to me, makes sense, because that's, even though it sounds crazy, um, that's what a family man does, right? A family man doesn't do what he did. No, I know. I guess what I mean is, um, it seems like you guys were going to be together forever in that way. Is that maybe what was going through your head? I, honestly, I just felt like I didn't, I didn't have to live. Yeah. And it was like, whatever judgment I was going to come upon myself. You know, I just didn't deserve to be on this earth anymore. Mm -hmm. What happened? Yeah. So what made you not do that, do you think? I don't know if it was just more of like a, because with the, with the site, maybe it was just more of like, I would have hurt more people than just me and everybody else. I know there's other people out there, not like at the site, but other people like maybe out in the area, like I didn't want something like on the site to catch fire and blow up and other people around would get hurt the same. So you were thinking initially about starting a fire out there, or an explosion, or something, or just, no, not not for not for that. Just like maybe I can take care of myself. And not about that. Wow, yes, I mean, that's the only thing. But I mean, I don't have like I don't have a gun. I don't have anything like that. It's not like I'm suicide that way. But so just like, to blow yourself up. I mean, what? it was just I wasn't thinking. Yeah, yeah. I don't. Yeah. I, it was. I mean, I don't have. I don't have weapons. I don't have. I've never hunted before in my life. I don't know what. I mean, nothing was right that morning. Yeah. yeah. I remember you kept telling me that. You kept saying, I didn't know what I was doing, Tammy. I didn't know. Like, yeah, when you asked me I about remember... the sheet, like, what were you doing? Like, I don't know what I was doing. Yeah. I think you were just, like, in automatic mode, or it seemed like. So did you stri drive straight out there? So what were you thinking on the way out there? It's kind of like what I was doing right now. I'm just, like, you know, nervous, shaking, not knowing, like, you know, What's gonna happen? Yeah. Like, I know, like, my life has completely changed. I don't know, like, what's happening. Like, honestly, like, I try to picture that, that whole ride. Like, it's like 45 minutes to an hour ride out there. And it's just like, couldn't I have, like, saved my girl's life? Couldn't I have done something? Why did I do that? I don't know. All right. Like, this is my flesh and blood. This is, like, what I wanted all my life was to be a dad, just to have, you know, kids and, they love me, they, you know, all that, and it just nothing, nothing made sense. Right. Like the oil tank, nothing made sense. I'm just like, what the doing? Mm -hmm. So what happened when you got out there? Took Shanann out, just to a place off to the site. Mm -hmm. Then. What were the girls doing when you were doing that? Drug. And then what happened after that? DC was first. She did have a blanket. She had a blue blanket. A Yankee blanket. So was she alive when she went into the oil tank? No? Yeah. Blanket over her head. And that's how she passed. Good grief. Huh. Put the blanket over her head. I didn't want to. No. Right there, there in the back seat. Okay. What was Bella doing? Later. Did she understand that she knew what was going on? The same thing. And then the same for Bella? Just without a blanket? Blanket. Oh, okay. I didn't look. Like every time I closed my eyes, I just hear her say, Daddy, no, and that was it. That's what Bella said. 
I hear that every day. You got it. Sorry, man. I'm sorry it doesn't take anything back to it. I know. Is it possible that in your mind you didn't want them to suffer throughout their life? Was this like a mercy thing? I mean, you can say that like after the fact, but it was just like, I don't... You didn't feel like that right now? I just didn't feel like it was just like an anger with Shanann, with everything that I was just taking it out on everybody that was in front of me that morning. Yeah. I mean, kids growing up, with, growing up without their parents, they, I mean, depending on what grandparents or whatever they, whoever they grew up with, seemed to be fine, but it was just like, it was an anger thing. It was just like... <laughs> What were you so angry at Shanann about? Like, if you could pinpoint it. Nothing that... Nothing that makes anybody want to do this. You could be angry at your spouse, like, your whole life, but you should never have done anything like this. You should never let it get to that point. And I let it get to a point where I never... I mean, I've never been angry before. Like, this was, like, the epitome of being angry. Yeah. The epitome of like showing the rage, the epitome of like losing, losing your mind. I mean, even like some people in here said, they're like, what the heck happened? You must have freaking snapped. And, like, walk away. It's like, you know, it's. I don't see it in my mind how it could have, like, you know, I look outside every day and I'm like, what could we be doing right now? You know? Right now, I'd have a five-year-old, a three-year-old, and a more than likely a one-month-old son. Beautiful boy. And just like, right now, it's just me. I watched that video of you finding out that Shanann was pregnant. <laughs> Don't seem excited. You seem, like, kind of in shock. Scared. and Yeah, like, oh, fuck. Like, well, it's, it's already complicated, and now this. Well, it's, like, uh, when we had talked about it, like, a couple weeks, it happened fat, like, Bella, it was, like, we almost gave up mm -hmm. trying, and then she bought me, like, a supercharger for my car, and then with CC, it was, like, we had to try and try and try, and then finally, but with Nico, it was, you know, once or twice, and then, like, two players was pregnant. Is mm -hmm. that what happened? Yes. Hmm. It's just, like, it was more of, like, Surprise, scared, I'm like, wait, what? Like, we just, we just, we just talked about this. <laughs> like, you know? You know, people have brought up the fact, like, oh, she, she was probably pregnant before, like, you guys even talked about it, I'm just like, not, no. But like, yeah, it was insanely fast. I give it that, like, that's the only reason I ever gave that notion, like, even the moment of thought, because it was, like, faster than any other time that she, she'd gotten pregnant. You just didn't seem happy like you know what i mean like yeah, i haven't like i don't remember the video much i know she was wearing like a oops we did it again shirt i think and i was walking with my cooler or something and mm -hmm. i don't remember like my actual like reaction like watching the video but like i could see i could see her surprise see like uh didn't seem like he was jumping joy type thing yeah it didn't seem like that did you watch the one of the uh, when i found out about cc huh oh, okay. Is it totally different? Yeah, it was. Yeah. Yeah, it was. Because uh, Bella was in the crib and it had an eviction notice on the. Oh, yeah, I think you crib. told me about it. Yeah, I never saw mm -hmm. it, though. Yeah. I picked up Bella and spun her around, and uh, this time it was just me and Shanann, and she was in the kitchen. I don't know, like, I don't forget what date it was. Maybe, like, June. Third or fifth or seventh, I'm not sure like what day it was in the video, but maybe I already felt guilty about talking to Nikki at work. Yeah. Maybe I, maybe that was going through my head. Is that the potential timing? Does that make sense? Okay. I don't remember the video, what day the video was, but I knew like I kind of met Nikki around like June first. I knew like the only like afterwards. When you say met her, you mean like went on a date with her? No, no, I never went on a date with her until. Yeah, North Carolina. Oh, okay. Just like flirting stuff. 
Yeah, I mean, there was natural flirting back, back and forth, and I was just like, I just, I knew that, like, with that video timing, I probably just looked like I was like, felt guilty for even talking like, oh, it worked. You probably did, right? Yeah. Did you guys fight before you and Shanann? I know you talked about like not really raising your voice and stuff. Was there? Because I want to say, didn't a neighbor talk about them fighting and stuff? Yeah, but that was that was embellished and exaggerated, and he retracted that. Oh, he ended yeah, up he, doing yeah, that. He that so. Did you guys ever fight? Did you ever? No, I mean, have, was, was there any domestic violence in your house? Like, no, I've never. And, this is strange to us to even have, from her to you. I mean, yeah. She gets no. bad when she's pregnant and grabs a knife or no, like scratches no. you or smacks you around or nothing. No, she's never like nothing. Okay, but makes all this even more hard to understand. Not at that point, no, too. Yeah. Did she ever belittle you at all? Did you ever feel that way? Maybe was that? Did you? Did she ever make you feel like she belittled you or you felt belittled by her? I mean. There's always points, like, in, in a marriage where, like, you know, the dominant person, like, you know, takes control of sure. everything, but, like, you know, I was just, my whole life, I just kind of went with the flow, like, yeah, I never, I never, like, put myself in the center of attention I didn't want to be. Yeah. I just kind of, I just wanted to be in the back row. Mm -hmm. you know, if she did belittle me, I couldn't think of the exact point or time. She never really felt that way. No, I mean, I, I mean, I always knew I was like, you know, the introvert, and she was the, you know, she took control of most situations. Like when people came over, like you know, I knew what I, <laughs> my role was. Yeah. Like I watch videos. It's like, like cooking, you know, or she'd make like power balls, or you know, or like uh, protein balls, or whatever. Yeah. You just don't seem like you want to be in those videos. No. Like you feel, I feel like you were being forced to be in those videos. And correct me if I'm wrong, but yeah, that's I, what I, it seemed I, like I, to I, me. I hated being. I mean, I did it because for her, because right. it was for for her business and sure. stuff. But like, it was, you know, I I didn't. I hated just being out yeah. for everybody to see. That's why, like, the whole like the gender reveal thing. I was just like, hmm, I I didn't want it to be like some live Facebook video. I'm just like, no. <laughs> yeah. But like, I just I never wanted to be out there. Yeah. I know. I'm like. Well, even when she was, because we talk about this a lot, Tammy and I, and Dave, even when it was, you know, I think it was Florida on some level or Thrive thing, and she's like, here we are, and it's all expenses paid, and I was like, I remember looking at you and thinking, like, he is not into this video right now. No, you don't look into any of the videos, I'll be honest with you. I wouldn't be either. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm I mean, I remember you talking about like she would even post stuff for you, like because oh, yeah. you're technically a salesman too of yeah, was, Lavelle of yeah, Thrive. Cause, like she put me underneath her, and that like anything like any of my friends or stuff, like anything I do would help her. Right. So it was, just, I would send her pictures, like like I should I take a picture with your patch, I'm like okay, send it to her, and then she'd make a post about it. She would. She eventually. She was like, "I need to take more control over like your business and stuff." I was like, "I don't know, I don't know how." Right. Like if I went up to talk about talk to somebody at the mall or at the pool or somebody about this, I just stumble all over my words and just like they'd be like, "Okay, bye." But no. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not the salesman. She's. She's. I mean, she could sell everything you're wearing back yeah. to you. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and you wouldn't even know it. Like, wait, I just paid. Right. For the shirt. I paid twenty bucks for it. Yeah, it's those videos were not me. I just I did it just just to support her. You know, like she would always say, "Oh." Could hey. you tell her no? Could you say, "I don't want to be in that video," or was that an option? Probably not. An option. I mean, it's like you know, she would have been like, "Oh, what? this is the you know help our family. This is for you know to help this and that." And so I couldn't. I mean, it would just it would have made her mad. I would. I would want to. Start that just because it's for the business, it's for the family. You know, I, I was just gonna try to help out wherever I can. Right. Did that actually make money? Mm -hmm. So not only just more sales, but it actually put money in your guys' pocket. Mm -hmm. okay. She made probably probably in that last year probably as much as I did on commissions. Basically, I mean, I know that's a simplified version of it, but yeah, I mean, it's uh, and they don't take taxes out on it, so yeah. right. So that was like the good thing, and they paid for your car. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, 
Did they give you an her an allowance or something mm -hmm. to buy a car? Yep, once you, if, you, if you're a certain level, like a 12K or above, they give you a car allowance once a month. I'm not sure how they how they make money. The owners doing that, but they did. Yeah. Unless they're just like an insane markup on the product, which I probably is. probably is. Yeah. Not sure how much much it costs them to make it. Yeah. Did you feel like a different person wearing those patches? Especially like the the duo the burn. I, I mean, the, it felt. I mean, like the Apple watches. Like if you look on it, like when it tells you to exercise, it says mm -hmm. I was exercising like all day. My heart rate was like up. Oh. Just from those patches. Was it full of caffeine or what? Uh, they just have something. They had something in them. I mean, I had, I had the black label ones, the, the longer black ones, they, those had caffeine in them, but it never had that effect. I mean, the duo burn ones, the ones that are more of like the fat loss type, it was, I could, it felt like I was working hard all day. Even were you, though I wasn't. Oh, uh, were you tired? I mean, I know at some points, I I mean, even Nikki said that, like, you no, know, I'd fall asleep on the couch, oh. on her couch, while I was talking to her, and then, like, <laughs> pick back up like I was, like, I never knew I fell asleep, mm. which I don't know if it was, like, an insomnia thing or what, but, like, I, was, huh. I wasn't I was sleeping. Mm. You had a lot going on, then. Yeah. yeah, but those were the only patches I really felt, like, a real big difference on, just because it felt like, I felt like I was working out all day. Mm-hmm. You don't feel like they changed your personality or anything like that, though? Or do you? I don't, I don't really know. I know I just, I just felt different on those and any other patch. It was... I felt like I could just go longer and longer each day. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure, like, if that was, that was probably a bad thing. I, I don't think I was probably sleeping more than three hours a night. So would you stay at, when Shan was gone, would you stay with Nikki and then go home for, like, to get ready to work? Yeah, i just wake up at, like, 4, 4.30 and go home and get ready for work and leave. And i just work out when I got back home. Mm -hmm. What were the conversations with Nikki as far as, um, at some point you guys were talking about her helping you find an apartment? So what did you guys talk about as far as your future together? That didn't really happen until like I got back from back from the beach. I told her like I you know I I lied to her like hey you know like I don't like I had talked to Shannon about getting a separation. And that talk hadn't happened yet. I okay. mean it, it kind of like not, I mean, she knew something was going on and yeah. she knew we we weren't sleeping in the same room and then she. She even mentioned the fact, like, hey, you know, you know Colorado's 50, 50 state or something like that. And she, okay, well, I guess she looked it up. But, you know, that actual talk, I didn't like having okay. that. I, mean, I was just like, I thought it was going to happen. Yeah. And so, when, in conversations with Nikki, and I get it, I mean, you're, you're telling her, like, the progress toward the divorce is a little bit more than it was. Mm -hmm. And then, so what were you guys planning? So it was more of like, um, she's going to help me find an apartment that was affordable. That's mm -hmm. kind of just around like Brighton or maybe just close to work, like or London or something down there. That's okay. kind of like where my area was. Mm -hmm. Did you talk about moving in with her? She, she didn't want that. She didn't want that? Would no. you have done that if she would have been yeah. cool with that? Uh, I could have been a little too soon. I would have thought. There was just, you know. We only been really seeing each other like almost like a month or and just talking about two months. That would really. So she she called her house like her apartment like her. I don't know like her, kind of like a shield or kind of like her. She had another word for it, but like her safe place. Yeah, like a safe mm -hmm. place or something like that. And she said like you know people like to invade it, but that's why she always let me come over because she said she felt like it was that was fine, like her dog liked me and everything. You know, should belong here type thing. Oh, okay. So you and Shannon, did you did you and talk about selling the house? At what point did you? I mean, there was some discussion there with Ann yeah, Meadows. She, and yeah, she had sent an email about to Ann about like how we would go about like selling the house. Yeah. And I think Ann told her about you know get like Ann was always about getting pre-approved. 
it's like, you know, like if you're going to sell your house, get pre-approved for like another house. So it's like, you know, much faster. Yeah, so you just quickly transition from one to the other. And when did that happen? Remember? I think it was either right before we left. No, uh, that happened have been like first week of August, somewhere around there. I think she might have contacted her. Okay. So the plan was maybe to buy a house. I think you told me in Brighton, you think about buying a house in Brighton. Yeah, just like, she under. liked that, uh, that Adams 12 mm -hmm. school system or something. Yeah. So, yeah. I, think, I think that's what Brighton is. Actually. Yeah. What were you thinking about when you called that the school that day, on Monday? I, I was freaking out. I didn't know. Like, I was thinking in my head, like, what I just did, what I just done. And I didn't know, like, it was, it was, even, it was stupid to do anything. So, I mean, call the school, to call Ann, to call anybody. I mean, they were right to be, you know, suspicious about anything. Like, cause I knew I, I probably sounded eccentric on the phone and out of, out of sorts. I can only, only uh, I don't even know what they were thinking. They heard me. I think they thought it was weird, but I don't know how you would not sound weird, you know, like you said. So, so are you 100% sure the girls were still around and alive when you drove out? Okay. So that's completely accurate. There's nothing, nothing else about that. There. Yeah, in the truck. Okay. Where did the blanket go? Either probably in the trash can. In the trash? I, I, it wasn't like it was still in my truck. Okay. We thought we saw some GPS where you had stopped by near a construction uh -huh. uh, roll off dumpster. Is that true or? I think yeah. I think that's like I dumped my clothes in there. So was that would been on the way back to the house? My neighborhood. Yeah. When Officer Kunov was there. Okay. Was it one of those red construction dumpsters? More than likely. Okay. Did you pack new clothes? How did that work? I already have some in there. Just like, in case we had like a spill or something. Oh. Yeah. If you ever get crude oil on you, you don't. Yeah, I, had, I, like, I have like new, I have like two pairs of boots and all kinds of different stuff in there just because like, like, just one time I had to pick up a spill and I had defrost on, and I had, like, a headache for, like, two weeks because it's, oh. like, the crude oil that comes with it. So I always have something in there. So where did you keep them after you took them off? Like, did you just change out there into your new other clothes? Uh, so, like, I, I dumped my clothes at that. Um, but that wasn't that on the way back when you were coming? Like, you had already worked the whole day, yeah. right? Yeah, I'd worked, no. well, work like, till like, 11 or so. 11. Yeah. So that was back when... Well, when Nicole Atkinson, you know, when she was at yeah, uh, my house, at the doorbell is when I knew I was at the house. Right. Did you think right then, like, oh, fuck, like, here we go? Or what were you thinking about? I, I didn't even know why she was there. I was like, I didn't know, like, maybe maybe she had an appointment or something with Shanae. I, I didn't know. What did you think, like, that day, like, what you were going to say? Like, what was your plan? Were you just going to go home and be like, Report to the police that your family's gone, I, or I had, like once I had no idea what was going to happen after everything. I mean, I don't even know how I was even acting, even normal to people that I was around. Because when like Troy and Cody and Chad and Melissa and all them, like when they showed up on the site, I don't even know how I was even being somewhat even coherent what I was saying. But apparently, that should me. So that. I didn't know what was going to happen. Like, like I said, I, this wasn't like something like some criminal minds type. Like well thought yeah, out. Yeah, thing. it wasn't nothing like that. It was minute by minute at that point. Yeah, it was, I had no idea what it was. So once the girls were, were gone, um, was it also just a minute by minute thing as far as the oil tanks? Yeah, I didn't know what, what to do. I mean, I. Just thinking about an oil tank just makes me much want to throw up. And was that just because it was in front of you and there it was and just presented itself? It wasn't a, a plan beforehand? Okay. Was there any reason why 
the separate ones? No, I just, like you said, it was like a going up stairs and it didn't. No, like what Frank said, it's like I was trying to separate everybody. That's not. No. no I, was, yeah. I didn't want to separate anybody. What was the reason? I, I, I can't even tell you. It's like, like I said, like something else was in control of what I was doing, and it was like I was doing something I never thought I would ever do in my life. Hmm. Did you think there would be less chance of someone finding them if they were in separate tanks, or? I don't. Sounds like he's over there. Yeah. Oh. Mm-hmm. I, 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 whatever, whatever my reasoning was in my head that day, it wasn't, it wasn't sound. It was nothing. Right. And you don't even remember thinking about it. No, it was just like it was like a reaction of something that I wasn't even thinking. You talk about the trash bags. Do you remember that? Oh, uh, with uh, there were two. Oh, uh, with okay. Yes, trying to because like the sheet kept. I didn't want like when when I was putting there's like, one coherent, I guess the thing I had like I didn't want the girls looking at Shanann while they were in the back seat. Mm. So what'd you do? Put a trash bag on one end. Of on her feet, on her head, they didn't have to see. Okay. And they were just too little to kind of figure out, right? Yeah, they didn't know. Okay. That's good. I just know, like, when I was driving up there, I mean, you know, they were just, you know, sitting there just, you know, kind of asleep or kind of just, like, you know, holding on to each other, laying in each other's laps. You know, I, I didn't. Do you remember having any thoughts or thinking about why not just putting them all together with your name? Honestly, it was just happening so fast. I had no I, I really have a thought that was my own. Okay. But I wasn't like dutifully trying to separate anybody, yeah. passing away, trying to keep anybody separate. Uh, and everything, everything, you know, Frank Sandy and Frank said, you know, I, I, I don't hold it against them. I mean, they can hate me for, they, they have a right to hate me for the rest of their lives. They don't hate they you. Don't. In fact, while we're on the subject, I, I speak with them weekly. And, and I told them that we were going to come here and then hopefully would speak with us. And they told me to tell you, understandably, they're, you know, they're devastated. Um, but they actually said that they they love you. They still love you, and and Sandy explained it. You know, he's he's our son son in law for eight years. I can't just turn that off. So they don't hate you. Don't. That's so, amazing to hear that. Yeah. Well, and I can tell you, Sandy was 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 the one that was most resistant to penalties in this case, and she said that she told me that from the very beginning. Um, she didn't want that. It's God's decision. It's not her decision. And then she told me that even then. So it's not just a one-time thing that, that she has said it to me. Um, it's been over the whole course of, of the event. So um, that's probably one of the most honest things someone's ever told me. So that's, that's pretty amazing. Um, Faith is, she's obviously a believer. So am I. I yeah. get it. So I understand it. That's amazing to even hear that. Yeah. Good people. I would, have, I would have figured they would have hated me for... They don't. I mean, yeah, anybody would think that. I certainly would have, but I, I have to admit I was surprised. Really taken back by that, but I certainly don't. What did they say when they knew you were coming out here? Um, they just, they said they want to know, you know, details, because they need closure. And that's really all they want. And they want to keep it private. And I said, absolutely. You know, we'll talk to them about what you told us. And just so they can put it past them. They're having a hard time dealing with it and trying to get past it all. And, um, and I think that may help. Just to, you know, just to know. Closures, no. I mean, 
my parents still think, you know, like, I, I told them I pled guilty for a reason. Right. Right. And, like, I told it to them when they had that uh, video video phone thing in Colorado the day before, like, I pled guilty. Like, I pled guilty for a reason. Mm-hmm. Like, I didn't just, you know, I knew other people were watching. So I didn't just go in and, like, say anything. Mm-hmm. Like, they seemed to take it. Okay. And what made you do that, Chris? What made you plead guilty? I didn't want anybody else to. I didn't want them to go through this for two or four years. I didn't want my attorneys to lie for me for four for two or four years. Like they, I mean, they would have done anything I told them to do. Sure. That's what they're. I don't see how they can do that. Like you know, that's what attorneys do. You know, like they take their defendant and they say, hey, like what happened? Okay, we'll go with that story. Like I told them everything I just told you guys. And it was just like, they just, and they got together, like, well, if, you know, if, if they ever wanted, they ever offered a plea deal, would you ever want to, like, just plead guilty to I'm like, yeah, I mean, if, it, if we can end this, end it. Like, I was, like, in September, I told them that. Really? Yeah, they, like, but, you know, it was way too early, and the prosecution was still doing their, yeah. this guy used to grabbing evidence and all kinds of stuff, and that wasn't even really on the table. So I think it was in, like around Halloween. Mm-hmm. I think that's when the, the prosecution went to went to Frank and Sandy, Frankie's house, and it's talking like, if we can end this, would you be open to that? And that's when like you know like the whole death penalty and everything, all that right. conversation happened. And uh, I guess they were surprised that it, it, it would be over. Yeah, and we were all in shock. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, that was like... It's like we were going 100 miles an hour, and then we just hit a brick wall. Like, that's what it felt like to all of us. So, I mean, obviously you had more time to yeah, I mean, I, I contemplate mean, it than yeah, us. Yeah, I but. was... I, I mean, I told, I told John and Kate and Sophia and everybody, Amy, hey, it's, if we can just stop this, and, like, I know it's, you know, everybody's telling me to fight, fight this. You know, there's no, like... There's, like... Everybody's saying there's, like, not enough evidence to such and this this and that, and I'm just like, no, I'm just like, this needs to end. Like, I don't want people to have to, for Frank and everybody, to have to fly back to Colorado every single time and get reminded of this, like, I'm not sure, like, it's never going to go away, but to actually have to come and talk about it, have other people talk about it, have, you know, have all three of you get on the witness on the witness stand and say, you know, what they saw, yeah. what they've seen. Yeah, what what they they heard on tapes and everything like that. It's just like I don't want people to live that over and over and over again for for years. Like if I could just end this for everybody, and then like if there's any closure at all, they could you know they could start then instead of like twenty twenty two, right? You know, like you know, everything just like I know it'd only get worse for everybody. So did it have anything to do with you not? Having the death penalty? No, like, I mean, honestly, like, when I was sitting in that cell, I felt like I should die. I mean, I, I was listening to everybody telling me, like, hey, if you do this and this, you can hang yourself in that cell. You could do this and that. You, you, they were, like, telling you stuff. Yeah, you, they, could they, you could drown yourself in the toilet if you wanted to fill your toilet bowl up or something like that. It was, um, they've been there a bunch of times. And, like, you know, I was, at one point, I was listening to them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, I was just like, you know, you know, I just felt like maybe I could, maybe there's a different purpose for me somewhere. You know, maybe it's here. I don't know. Like, I pray to God every day that he would move me away from Colorado. Like, he moved me away from, like, the DOC there, because I just knew, like, cause they were saying there was a hit on me. <laughs> they said if I was going to a DOC in Colorado, like, I'd last a week and I'd be dead. Because, like, the gangs and all that kind of mm-hmm. stuff. So, like, I just felt like God moved me here for a reason, and I'll, you know, Hopefully I can help people that way, but like I didn't want my family, I didn't want Shanann's family, and all of our friends, like you know, having to go through that because after a while I knew it was like this stuff was everywhere, and I knew like all her thrive friends, everybody, it was just like it would just, it would just broke just that hole in their heart just a little bit bigger every time. I didn't want that. I knew it had gotten worse. I didn't want, it, I didn't want it to get any worse than it already was. Did you ever think about, well, you know, 
it could be very believable what I told him. It could be very believable that Shanann did, you know, end the girls. So maybe if I tried to convince people that, maybe if I fought with my attorneys on that, maybe I could lessen it somehow. Did you ever think about that? Honestly, I never even thought about the story until you guys mentioned it. Yeah. Okay. I wondered. I never even thought about it until you guys mentioned it. But what did you think about it once it got mentioned? It's just like I just went with it. I didn't, like, you know, I knew my dad was out there. I knew it was like, you know, I knew they would probably believe it because, you know, my mom and my sister just never really liked Shanann. And I knew it was like, you know, I mean, through all this, like, I got letters from some of my friends that even said, you know, you know, when we went over to your house, we could see, you know, Shanann was more of a dominant personality and more of like, you know, you know, you're always helping with the kids and everything. You just, you know, you're a great dad and everything. We could see, you know, a couple of things that I never saw or, you know, whatnot. And even my best friend Mark even said, you know, there's always, you know, something, you know, I didn't really get with you, man. I was just like, why well, never told me any of this stuff, but okay. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it was, I never thought about that story. And, you know, that's what my turn for going with. Yeah. And then, like, I think it was probably the second week I told him, like, what had really happened. What did they say after that? They were quiet. They were writing it down. They were. They said they wouldn't judge me. So I told them. I told them everything that happened. And they, you know, appreciated, like, I guess, you know, most of the time, you know, they're dependent or they're, you know, and it's not like tell them actually what happened. No. Yeah. They just, you know, tell them, all right, get, get me off, get me out of here. This is what happened. So I told them what happened. I I didn't want them going. If this was going to go like anywhere in courts, I didn't want them to be under a false pretense and like get surprised. So I know like there was probably things that you guys probably knew that maybe if I if I just kept if I lied to them, just tell them not this, this is what happened, that it would have like made them look foolish and stupid and just like, you know, unprepared and I'm just like, this is what happened. And they you know, they appreciated me telling me telling them that so now they they would be prepared and that's when they were saying like, you know, if if it was ever you know, if we ever went to them, the prosecution and say, hey, if we could end this, would I be open to it? I'm like, if it could end, end it. I know there was like, um, wasn't her phone found on the couch or between the couch cushions? Like, did you plant all that stuff? I just threw it in there. You just threw it in there? Why why did you do that? I I don't know what was going on that morning. Like, even like, you know, her watch, her phone, like, I, you know, if I was actually like, if I'd planned this, I would probably just take it out to the field, you know? Mm -hmm. What about her ring and stuff? What were you thinking about that? It's like, you know, maybe she wanted. Maybe she actually really wanted a divorce. Maybe she didn't want to fix it. Just put it there on the counter. She took it off? Or did I, you I, take I, it off? I took it off. Okay. Oh, so that would look like she was saying, I want a divorce. I'm leaving it here when I'm taken off. I see. So the phone and her watch and, and the couch, was that that morning before you left to go to service? Okay. Yeah, because I think uh, Nicole's son found it or something. Yeah. What other things did you do that maybe we even missed? I just wanted to watch. Yeah. I think I threw the therapy book she wanted me to read in the trash. Um, that was that morning? I probably think so. Were you trying to make it look like she threw it in the trash? I don't I don't know. I just like, oh. I, I just didn't think it was nothing was ever gonna work again. So it was I didn't know what was going on. Did you go down to the basement? I thought the basement door open. Yeah, the door is open, but yeah. So there was a lot of movement. You know, I think it was around 426 or something. The garage door opening, the basement door opening, and then, of course, the living room sensors and all. Do you remember what you were doing all during that time? Other than you had a lot of steps. Of I'll just say that. Okay. <laughs> so, like, the... Basement, I'm not sure. I mean, the only thing I really have down there is my workout. I, the bench press. Do you remember going down there for anything or opening that door for anything? Did you think about, well, maybe I'll take her out that way or? 
Is it a walkout basement? No. It no. wasn't at your house. Oh, okay. That's like a garden level basement. Okay. No, I don't remember really. I'm... What's up? I don't think it worked out that morning. Like, were you packing your lunch in the kitchen? Like, did you oh, have yeah. to do all that normal yeah. stuff? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I definitely packed the lunch and everything. Did all that. I don't, I don't remember what about the basement. Unless I just worked out that morning, I just don't remember. I don't think I did. So one of the more... Unless there was a trash bag down there, then. Yeah, you got trash bags down there? Not maybe. Maybe it Maybe there wasn't any in the garage, and I went down there and got one. Do you normally carry a roll of trash bags in your truck? No. So, there was a roll in your truck. There was? Yeah. I mean, maybe I just grabbed it and brought it with me then. That would have been kept in the basement, maybe? Or the basement or the garage. Or the garage. Yeah. I'm sorry, what were you saying, Graham? Oh. Um, one of the more kind of poignant or tender moments in all of this was um, seeing you with your dad when he came in. Um, what was it like when you picked him up at the airport? It was, it was very strange. It was, it was kind of like I almost knew this probably the last time I'd ever see him on the outside. In my head, I knew that. Yeah. What did you guys talk about? Honestly, like, he just wanted to talk about sports. Just wanted, yeah. He just, like, you know, he didn't. He's always kind of like, you know, distance himself from like, uh, like a problem type thing. Like, you know, when, like, if there's ever an issue or anything like that, he always want to talk about, like, just bring up, like, when I would try to get him to quit smoking, like, all the time. Like, that's after, like, I graduated high school and whatnot. He would. Are you talking about cigarettes? Yeah. Okay. And, uh, he would always, like, just change stuff. He's like, oh, you know what happened in the race? Uh, football? Just something. I mean, he. <laughs> He just never wanted to, like, you know, he said, okay, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll get to it, and he was, boom, something else. And, you know, I just kind of felt like it was kind of like that, you know, like, he, he asked, maybe asked, like, a few questions, like, you know, do you know where they're at, and do, do, do you think, you know, think you know where they're at, or anything like that, and I don't know. And then, like, start talking about, just want to talk about sports, and just, like, normal, normal things, and just kind of, I'm not sure if he maybe knew anything, you know. Maybe he kind of figured out something maybe happened and just wanted to talk to me as, as his son. Is it possible if he saw that you were in a stressful situation and wanted to do what he always did, make yeah. things comfortable? I think that was a good way to put it. But you picked up a lot of that from him. Yeah, because uh, in stressful situations, like, I I mean, the gray hair didn't show it, but, like, I, I try not to be in stress. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, you know, it's... Like, you know, I work on cars, there's a lot of stress. It's always, you know, it's on commission. Mm -hmm. You know, you get paid what you do, not by showing up. So, you know, Van Darko was a little less stressful. You know, I got paid just to be there. Mm -hmm. but, you know, was your dad's marriage, like, yours and Shanann's marriage, as far as, like, your dad was the more passive one and uh, your mom was the yeah, more my dominant? Mom was always the more aggressive one. Was she like Shanann, in a way? I mean, were you attracted to Shanann because she was kind of like how your mom and dad's relationship was, or...? It was like, you know, it, it almost mirrored, like, her mom and dad's relationship, honestly, because her dad's like my dad. They're both, like, kind of calm, cool, mm -hmm. clever. I could see that, yeah. And her mom is very... Sandy rules that roost. Oh, yeah. 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 Very. And it's just like, you know, I, I, I kind of related it to that, because, mm -hmm. like... Her mom always said, like, she she always told Shanann that she would marry somebody else kind of like her dad. I felt like I was kind of like her dad. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I wasn't like, like, you know, I couldn't build a lot of things he could, but, you know, our personalities were kind of like, you know, I was always, you know, I think he really liked me the first time he met me because, like, I was um, helping, helping Shanann with this, uh, she had got this car from the dealership that she was working, that she worked at, and she was driving around and felt like, you know, the wheels might fall off. And uh, I pulled over where her dad was, and I was like, I got underneath that jacked it up, and I was like, you know, trying to fix everything. He's saying, like, any other guy she'd ever dated would have just, like, stood by and watched me do it. And so, like, that's when he really, like, kind of, kind of like me. Took to you. It was just like, I was, I was always wanting to help people, not to, not to hurt anybody. 
Well, and you helped her all through her lupus, and you're at the colonoscopy, yeah. and you're jacking up the car. And, mm-hmm. Yeah, I, just, I mean, any time she had an issue with, like, a car at the 30 South Customs, like, I would just go out to work, and mm-hmm. do what I could do with it, you know, I would just you know, do whatever I could to help. Yeah. Well, and I think one of the reasons Frank and Sandy work so well is because Frank lets Sandy be Sandy. Yeah. And they probably both <laughs> saw in you that you let Shanann be Shanann. Yeah, I just, like, you know, I didn't, I didn't try to change her. Right. Like, I just let her be, you know, who she is. Yeah. She's like, you know, she's young hope. Yeah. You know, she knows what she wants. She's going to go get it. Yeah. And I didn't say, hey, you know, you can't do that. And that's what her first husband did. Yeah. She he controlled everything. He, he tried to be Sandy. It didn't work. And she, and she turned into almost like me. She was like, she just kind of like, like played back and just kind of like let him do what he was doing. And I think she learned after that that she could be herself. And with me, she could definitely be herself. Yeah. So that's how it worked. So do you think your dad had any inkling? Because I'm trying to remember the timing. He showed up when you were still walking around. You weren't in any trouble yet when Ron came in. Yeah, I, was, I had met with you the night before, mm-hmm. for like a, three or four hours. And, and then I was at Nick and Amanda's house. Okay. Right there, and that's when I went to go pick him up. Okay. And you picked him up. It was early that morning, right? I think it was like 10.30, I think, when his flight came in. Okay. And then so from there, you, I, you guys probably drove home and then to the police station. Yep. And the, the talks there were no type of confession from you. Okay. No, it was like, he was just going to wait. That's I told him, like, you know, if you're hungry, there's like that barbecue joint down the street. Yeah. And like, you know, it's good. And it was, you know, he told me he never left. He didn't. I wasn't lying. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He was faithful. He was. Yeah, just, I mean, I, I don't know how he lasted that long without food. We ended up giving him food. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. He, uh, he was great. Um, and the reason I ask is because when I look back and watch that video, um, now knowing what I know after talking to you today, I can see how genuine he was. I just didn't know if you guys had come up with some sort of plan. Okay. No, he, he, he never talked about it. Okay. I don't, I, if I had told him anything, he would have probably just told me tell him right away. I think you're right. He would have still loved me either, either way, but he would have told me if you need to tell yeah. him, like right now. Yeah. Like, you don't need, I mean, I didn't think I was going to be there for 14 or how long it was, like 10 hours, how long it was that day. You were there a long time. Yeah, but it was, he would have told me just to say, just to tell you. Yeah. Did you know walking in there that you were going to tell us? Or did you think? I didn't, I mean, I knew there was a reason you brought me back in. I know it well for the. Um, what did you think about the polygraph? That was horrible. <laughs> Why do you say that? I don't know how you do that. Why do you say that? Because <laughs> Tammy's a torturer. I am not. No, like, I mean, tell you, me. You answered. Oh, you, know, you asked me questions for like, well, like three or four hours beforehand, and then you do the polygraph, and it's like you just break down somebody's brain to where like too it's much like, or too, what? Too much. <laughs> <laughs> Jello, and it's just like I. Damn. I know it's it's you guys have a job and you have a plan and that's. Yes, She's thorough, right? There's yeah. just no, there's yeah. no way to get out of there without the truth. No, I mean, I, I kind of knew like where, because right when I you asked me about like Saturday night, the when I told your brother walking, I was like, man, she was like going through her head. Like, <laughs> well, so, we did know we found out about Nikki right before the polygraph. I, I, I figured that out after after with meeting with John and everybody that yeah. she had mm-hmm. met with. Somebody from the CBI, mm-hmm. like yes. the like on the fourteenth or the fifteenth. I was just like, if you were talking, oh, okay. You already knew, so but. I mean, I didn't know how extensive it was, but yes, we we knew. Yeah, I, I mean, I walking in there that day, just walking into that room, I knew I wasn't walking out. Yeah. Just just the feeling I had walking in that room. Yeah. Just seeing, I mean, I don't remember if the polygraph stuff was already in there. I think it was. It but, was, yeah. But it was, I knew it. I just felt, I just feel like sometimes when people, you know, do do the bad thing and they stay, like, some part of me thinks, well, I think they're here because they really want to tell us what happened. Because it's not normal that you want to keep all that in. Like, that just kills people on the inside. And I could tell it was killing you that day. Yeah, I mean, it was just like that. Or, 13th when I slept in the house, I didn't, I didn't know anything, I just slept maybe like two hours because I just finally just 
got so tired I just fell asleep. I turned out, had every light on. I didn't. I nothing felt right. What were you thinking about during your media interviews? I didn't want to do it. Why did you do it? Did you feel like you had to do it? I felt like you know they would have just kept knocking on my door and if until I answered it, and like I didn't even set it up, but you know Nicole Atkinson set it up. She told me, "Hey, Fox is going to set it up." She said, "Fox is going to be at your house at ten thirty." Like what? Okay. And you know, I think I even called I even called you about it. Like, what do you recommend that I do? And he's like, "Come up to you." And like okay, and I called one of her friends. You know, what should I do? And uh, she said, "I probably wouldn't do it." But I just felt like, you know, I, don't, I don't even want to know what I said, what I looked like on there, because I knew it. Some people said it just, it just made it look even worse after the fact, but. It, it, it didn't look good. I, I mean, obviously we can't say, oh, we knew right then he was lying, but I think we all watched it together and went, this might be bad. Yeah. I had that feeling after I watched it. So well, I could kind of see it in your face. It's like I was just lying to more and more people, and it was just like I just. Do you have internet access here? No. So you don't just don't get into that trap of putting in. What trap? Oh. The, the social media trap and all that. No, they don't. Ridiculous. They don't let you have social media here. Yeah. Like, um, I think some of the GP guys are getting like these little like tablets or something that are like you know the size of like a older iPhone or something. Mm. But I think they can use like emails. I'm not sure. I'm not sure about like social media. No, no, definitely no social media. Like, I'm not sure about internet or not. But mm -hmm. This place is kind of like you know like dead zone five for phones, anyways. I would think. I don't know. We're getting service, which is weird. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't think we would. Right here. Yeah, right in this maybe room. This, maybe this is kind of like a hub of yeah. computers. <laughs> yeah, that's this true. This is the spot. Yeah computer room you would hope that it had some did you talk to um nikki afterwards after all this happened on the, on the yeah 13 and 14 what how, what was that conversation like it was the 13th it was kind of like you know it was more text and then maybe a phone call like a phone call and then she was just she thought maybe she you know, like took off with the kids like just you know, because I was not, I was telling her I didn't know where they were and all that. And on the fourteenth, she kind of like, I think she kind of thought something may have happened because mm -hmm. they hadn't come back. Why do you say that she might have thought that? Or, you know, she kept asking me like weird questions. Like she kept asking like questions that only I would know. But she was testing to see if like it was actually me on the phone. Like, what do you mean? Like, she would ask, like, you know, like, what's my dog's name? Or, like, what do I, like, uh, what yoga studio do I go to? Or something like that. And just, like, oh. hmm. Like, just answer. Like, like I'm, and then, like, another thing about, I'm sure, I'm not sure if this is you. Hmm. Just, like, okay. I, is this through text or is this through call? Text. Oh, okay. So she wasn't hearing your voice. Okay. Yeah. Is it possible she thought you'd been arrested and we were on the phone? Or, Either Shanann had my phone, or somebody else had my phone, or right. like maybe you know, maybe it was, maybe she thought it was. You know, well, hopefully Shanann would know all the answers to those questions, right? No, no, no. This is uh, Nikki asking me. Yeah, um, but she, if she's asking you your name, your dog, and what yoga studio, and yeah. like, wouldn't she, well, she, know she that? Maybe she thought, you know, maybe I was with Shanann. Uh, she was just trying to find out who she was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like some it. some of the. Some of the conversation, like on the 14th, got a little weird. I think that's when she met with UBI or something, or FBI. I'm not sure who she met with first. So she talked to you after she met with? No. Nope. Oh, that she was did. like she had told me like this is the last time you'll probably hear from me. I'm going to stay at my friend Jim's place. All this is all going on. So not to contact her until this is this is done. She told me to delete everything. I didn't delete everything. Okay. I'm not sure why I didn't delete anything, but probably helped you guys out a little bit. So. She told you to, to delete everything? Delete all conversation. Did all she tell you why? She said delete it. I don't think you can ever delete a text message. 
We're pretty good at getting deleted text messages. Did uh, when your dad came in, one of the first things you guys talked about, he said, you know, kind of quietly, I cheated on her, I cheated on Shannon or something. Your dad didn't know until that time? No, they had, when I was in North Carolina, I was six when I spent most of the day with my parents and my sister and everybody. You know, they had, uh, I had told them, like, something like, you know, this, I don't think this is going to work, like, for it, with what happened with the, the nuts and everything, and they're not being able to see the kids, so, yeah. like, you know, this is the first time they had talked to me, and pretty much. To, oh, because you went three weeks or something, right? Yeah, because Shannon told me to call them while I was in at the beach just to smooth everything out, because she was like, all right, whatever's going on in your head, you need to fix this. But she didn't want me to, she didn't want the kids to see them, she didn't want to see them. And then, like, when I did see him on August 6th, it was after I went and saw him. my grandmother. She's in a, in a nursing home. And um, she still wouldn't let, let me go see my parents or anybody with the kids. So I just told her to leave me there, and my dad would pick me up and, you know, spent the whole day there. And I just, they, they, they were, you know, they said they want to see the kids. They just don't know if they could ever, like, you know, forgive Shan for... Everything that happened that day, I guess, I mean, I'm not sure, like, everything that was said that day when they had that argument, but apparently it was, like, a knockdown, drag out, like, bomb and bomb. Pretty hurtful things. Yeah, I'm guessing so. And they, they just don't know, like, if they could ever forgive her or not. And I just, like, I I never told them about, like, you know, like, cheating on her. Like, they, they even asked me, is there somebody else? Oh, did they really? Yeah. So I, they could kind of sense maybe something's going on. Yeah, because Nikki was texting me the entire time I was over there. Oh. Like, they could kind of see, like, I was texting somebody. Mm -hmm. But it was like, they kind of, maybe they think, maybe they kind of knew. Like, even, like, when I was in San Diego talking to my friend Mark, I told him about Nikki. But I didn't tell him, like, I was going to meet up with her. Yeah. I told, I told him that, you know, I was trying to, like, I should have just told him right then. Maybe that would have helped. I know maybe he had he had an instance where there was some girl coming after him and she he she was engaged and he ended up getting with her and then they were together and then she cheated on him. Is this so, before he was married or during? Uh, it was after. Okay. But like he he, he could have you know, helped me, but I just you know, I never told him the whole thing. That you know, it was a lot further along than I, than I wanted it to be. That's interesting yeah. to think about, right? Yeah, I can give him some good advice. Uh, yeah, everybody. Well, this is my friend Mark. Oh, oh, oh I'm sorry. Okay. When well, I was in San Diego. Oh, I got you. So you think you told Mark about that, hoping that he maybe question you about it? Or well, I was, I was, I was, because you know, Mark, my best friend. You know, I grew up with him since I was like eight, nine years old. Yeah, yeah. So like, I, he had been married before, and it didn't work out. I guess they were stationed together or something like over in Korea, and uh, I was. Actually, it just kind of just came out with, like, the whole the whole story. Like, you know, like, I just told my there was a girl at work that, you know, I've been talking to, but I didn't know. I'm just, I'm just, just, just distancing myself from her. Yeah. But that wasn't the case. I was just letting it, you know, exponentially get worse. Right. But I told him, like, hey. Yeah. He was like, whoa, man. Like, all right. Take a step back and look. Yeah. Right. And, like, don't, like, fall into that trap. Being you're going to be alone for five weeks. And there's, there's times I wish, you know, like, maybe Shannon didn't have to go away for five weeks. Maybe we all just went for one week. Nothing would have ever happened. Only, I mean, five weeks alone, that's the only reason, really, that was even mostly not allowed to happen. There are quite a few people who would tell us, and who do tell us, you need to look into Nikki more and Nikki Kissinger. All the way from the extreme end of things being Nikki's the one who ordered the hit. She was there. I'm in the basement. She was she there. Was, yeah. You know, so the, the extreme is she's the one who told Chris to do it. She's the real problem. All the way. That's the extreme side. And then all the way to, well, there were these texts where she was infatuated. She was in love. She was saying how good Chris was in the sack. And maybe we should look at her more. You know, what would you say to those people? You know, she, she had her moments where... I had to talk her like off the ledge kind of deal. What does that mean? Like, she, I guess after the fact, there was like videos of her that she was like recording herself because she was like my bolo or something. I never knew that. But there, it's like she would get worked up about nothing. She would just like 
she came to my house once because I think it was like July, July 4th. I, I didn't have to work that day. So I didn't like get up at like, you know, four o'clock and go home. And she had called me like 10 times in a row. And I didn't hear it because I was sleeping. I was just like, and she was pissed. She was, was pissed. She was pissed. And like, I called her on the outside, like, where are you at? Like, what are you, like, I was like, I didn't have to work today. It was like, called me at like, you know, 5.30. It was like, the kids want to talk to you at 7.30. And like, like I was sleeping. She was like, it's like, screw you. Like, you know, like, I don't know where you're at. And, and I went back inside. So I'm like, I got to go. And she was just like, okay. Are you coming back? I'm like, five o'clock. So wait a minute. You kind of lost me there. Were you at Nikki's place when yeah. Shanann called you? Yeah. Okay, and so you were sleeping in her bed. Yeah, because I wasn't going to work that day, because I, I didn't have to that day. Mm -hmm. okay. The first holiday I ran off, and so she, she now was pissed, and, you know, kind of pissed Nikki off, too, that I just, that I left, but I think that's when she, uh, I called Nikki later, and she was like, you know, like, she kind of realized that, you know, she'd always be, like, you know, the second, second, she said second bill. That's sure. right. And because that's how I would come to that day. Just, you know, I, I don't want to be anywhere else when she had calls. She was already pissed. So, mm -hmm. it was stuff like that where she would really, like, she would go, she, would, she said she would go on, like, uh, websites and look at, like, will a relationship work with somebody? Like, will a mistress work? With, will a mistress turn into a relationship? That's what Nikki was looking at? Yeah. She would tell you that? Or she told that? me that. Okay. Yeah, she said that she would go on websites and look at stuff like that. Just the, I was like, why do you even look at stuff like that? Like, I just want to see what other people have experienced. But, like, so that confuses me, though, because I thought earlier you were saying she thought you were heading toward a divorce. So why was she looking at herself as a this mistress? Was, this was later on. Oh. Like, okay. you know, in August, like, okay. first week of August, when I told her, like, you know, I had had that talk with her about separation. Uh-huh. That's when, like, she started looking at, like, apartment stuff. But, like, during our July relationship type thing there. Oh, I see. That's when she was looking up, like, you know. Oh, it actually for work. And she oh. told she told her friend Brittany about it, I guess. And Brittany told her not to do it, but mm -hmm. she said she already made it. Yeah. And so, are those people absolutely wrong about Nikki? She wasn't asking you to get rid of your family. No. Are you sure. Okay. And no part of any of this was because she put it in your head or asked you to, or you never. I mean, this whole this whole relationship contributed to it sure but she never it never she didn't okay. want to. I mean, was it ever like i wish she didn't have kids i want to have you know kids of my own with you like uh, she wants i mean she never knew if she wanted to have kids but she said that you know at one point she said i'd like to give you a son what did she know that shenan was pregnant with a boy no did she know shenan was pregnant no. and why is that you just didn't tell her? I didn't know. Like, because we had met. But she didn't put that on Facebook. That's, that's, like, that's how did she I, not see that? I don't know. Maybe she didn't. She just didn't wait for me to tell her or she put it out of her head. Can I ask you a question? A lot of people think you named Nico after Nikki. <laughs> so what was that? Nico was actually a name that Shanann liked. Shanann thought of that one? Yeah, I actually, I wanted to spell it like N-E-K-O. I thought it was like Nico that mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. But she said N-I-C-O. I thought it was like something like Nico or something. Okay. I guess Nico is, is more of like an Italian name. Italian, mm -hmm. yeah. So, and like she did leave her, you know, my middle name and my dad and all that. But like okay. Nico is like, that's the name that she always liked. Okay. Did she name all the kids? She named Bella and Celeste? Yeah, Bella, because so Italian means beautiful. Marie, mom's middle name. Celeste is her grandmother's name. Catherine, she's mother. Did you have any input in their names? I just I liked them. I was like, I was like, if we have, oh, like, if we had a third child, you know, I was gonna, maybe we could have, like, Lee in the middle name, but, you know, like, you know, I knew, like, the girls' names. I, I love those names. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Especially, like, with the, you know, you have all nicknames for him, like Bell and Bellavine and CC, obviously. Good, but yeah, Nico was. Yeah, was yeah. Can we go back to the house on the 13th? So, um, 
one point, right when you got back there, and Coonrod was there, Officer Coonrod and Nicole was there, mm -hmm. and then you went in the house and you were for about a minute or so before you let everybody in. Remember what you were doing in there at that time? I was, so I went into the garage. Right. And then I ran around and I opened the front door. Yeah. Open the front door for did everybody come in through the garage or the front door? Everybody came through the front door. Yeah, so I came in, I went in through there, I came in, opened the front door, and I ran upstairs. I just was like, like I was looking around. Okay. Was that, that's after everybody? Did you go around the house at all before you opened the front door? No, no I, didn't, okay. I didn't run around the house. I stayed down the bottom, okay. on the bottom floor, and then yeah. went and opened the door. Yeah, okay. And I ran upstairs and everybody else, and that's when Cole's, Cole's son mm -hmm. was on the phone and Walk through the house. Yeah. She didn't have her bra on. Was that normal that she would sleep in her bra? Mm. Every once in a while. I mean, she just got home from the plane, so she didn't even take off her, her makeup or anything. Maybe she was just that tired. But normally, no. Did it not come off when you guys had sex? No? I think so. Sometimes she just, you know. Keeps her shirt on and she doesn't want me to like she wants what she wants. <laughs> she knew what she wanted. That's what she wanted. Was yeah. it just missionary sex? Yep. And when she when she her final resting place, was that just naturally what she was wearing? She didn't change her or anything like that? Okay. Did you have to see any of that stuff? Pictures or anything? No. I asked not to. Okay. They said I could. I was like, no, I don't want. Uh, I've prayed for those hazmat workers that I'm, I'm sure it was hazmat, right? I had to. You were part of it. Yeah. Like, we were all there. We were all there. Sorry. Guys, I never wanted to see it. I, I was afraid because I was rather have to be there. I, I, don't, I don't, never wanted to know what. What the aftermath was, and they they, they said like you know if they ever got to, ever got like a preliminary preliminary hearing that I I would have to see them just to be prepared, not have a reaction, an initial an initial reaction. But I was like I don't want. Do you feel like your lawyers were fair to you? Yeah. Yeah, I mean they were all. I mean they were my only. In contact, really. Yeah. They're, they're kind of like, almost like a guidance counselor, almost. Yeah. Did you feel like you were driving the bus, though? With your decisions you made? Yeah, or I, mean, no? I was like, I, you know, there was a lot of things I didn't really know what was going on behind the scenes. Like, sure. Maybe there was a lot of things they never told me. Like, you know, um, like stuff that came out, like, afterwards. Like, that whole Nicky Nick Kessinger article in the Denver Post and all that kind of stuff. They told me, like, afterwards and everything, but... It was, I always felt like anything I was telling them, they were, they were, they were going to do. Like the whole taking the plea deal and everything, I told them that's what I wanted to do. And they, you know, they, they asked me, like, it seems like a hundred times, are you sure you want to do this? Are you sure? Like, once you sign this, like, um, I guess, like, up until sentencing, I had the time to, like, you know, back out. But, like, I, they always, even before we walked into court, I'm like, are you sure? So, yeah, this is. It. Okay. They, ne they never told me this is what you have to do. Mm -hmm. They always just said this is your decision. You know, like if you want to take this farther. Where you know, even John said he, he was right. He had all kinds of motions written, all kinds of stuff that were like really creative, and because he'd never been in something like this before, and he was ready to fight. And it's like I, I didn't want you to have to do that. Not for me. Not for. Not for something that story isn't true. Right, isn't yeah. Because it was only, it was just only God. Right. For everybody. For all three of you, for everybody that was involved in it. Are you still glad you did? Yeah. I mean, I never, I never thought I'd be in prison the rest of my life. But like, I, I don't want people to have to keep this every day of their lives, knowing that, you know, there's a trial hanging over their head, or, I mean, if, if it ever got that far, I don't know yet, but, like, I didn't want people to have to relive it every day.
Did they have to ever see the pictures? Did you say that again? Did they have to ever see the pictures? Frank and Sandy and all that? No. No, they never saw it. They saw some things. They didn't, they didn't see anything that. Okay. Yeah. We shielded that from them. That's one thing. I just didn't want them to have to see anything or hear anybody talk about what. Or, or like, you know, any anybody bastard their daughter, you know? Like, anybody in the room, like, you know, they hear what, you know, some of my friends had a negative you know, impact on her, from her, or like, had a description of her that didn't, that they didn't, that didn't match, you know, something like that. I didn't want them to hear that either, but like, I didn't want them to, like, anybody have to trash her memory. Like, I wanted, like, them to know, like, she was a loving wife, she was beautiful, she always helped everybody else, all her friends, her Lucas friends, everybody. I just wanted, I, I, didn't, I didn't want anybody to take away what she did. We twice. tried to get you to say that that night, I know, I know I but know. Um, do you remember that? I remember, I was just like... I know you obviously weren't ready to say I, that I, I, I know, it's like, you know, like after my dad left, we both came in and like, all right, we got most of the story, let's get to the, the true story. I was like, I just wanted to bang my head against the table. But in the end, I think you did the right thing, and... Even though it's hard to hear, um, there's a lot of people who think you what you did. I think your whole life has been thinking of others except for one brief moment. You know, you really did think of others when you made that choice. So I personally thank you. I, it, it would have been hard for the three of us to go through about this hard and for everyone else about that hard, right? Yeah, it was anybody that was family or friends. Right. It's excellent harder for everybody. Yeah. Do right thing. So you haven't told your parents what happened? You just told them I'm pleading guilty for a reason? Yeah, I've told them, like, on the phone, even, because they, they're still... They, you should fight it. You should get... All, uh, they've, they've got letters from, like, Australia, from England, I mean, of, like, the 35C in Colorado and stuff, so like, you know, proper counsel or something and like effective that. Counsel. Mm, effective counsel. And, um, I mean, some of the stuff they've, you know... They said about, you know, the dry patch, how it's not, like, FDA-approved, how it can alter somebody's mind, like, um, uh, like, it, it was some kind of condition, but there's something else they call, like, CPSD, complex, uh, post-traumatic stress disorder, or something like that have been, like, some people from England have had it, it's, like, uh, they've been in a... a Emotionally abusive relationship and stuff like that. I mean, it's like, you know, some of the, some of the little subjects they put in there, like, yeah, I can relate to it, but like, it doesn't go for the fact what happened. But like, they've, they, they've got a lot of support. From, they've got a lot of hate mail, a lot of phone calls, a lot of like, you know, stuff like that. I wish they never happened. But they, they, they get some support, which is good. But on the phone, they still think there's a chance I can get out. Yeah. I mean, you don't want to ever think your kid's going away forever. Like, they, I mean, they, they you don't want to fathom that. They tell me to fight it, like, you know, you know, they don't, not every day, but in their, on their bad days, yeah. they'll get a bad message or a bad letter, and then I'll just come her back. Is it more your mom or your dad? My mom. Yeah. She loses it a lot. Yeah. On the phone, my dad's usually trying to, you know, like, hey, don't talk about this stuff. My mom will it's mm-hmm. just gonna rile it's gonna rile you up and it's gonna make him go back to his cell and he's gonna just kinda think about that all night. Right. And that that's what happens a lot. Yeah. Would you ever want him to know what you're telling us today? I'd rather just tell them myself. Yeah. So that they're coming I think they're gonna try to make a visit in like May or so. So they don't know. do they still think that Shanann killed the person? They still believe that, even though I told them I play guilty for a reason, but they think that I was, their, their words, like, railroaded by the leaders. Because yeah. they, you know, they felt like I, they, they pressured me to do it. Yeah. To, do you feel like that? No. No, they, they asked me plenty of times. This is like, you know, they, want, they wanted to fight. Like, they were, if I said fight, they would have just, you know, yeah. gone, and, gone their gloves. Yeah. Went yeah. there and did it. You know? It's like, no, I just, I can't have you do that. So, Chris, you care about others deeply, I can tell. You worry about others. Um, and I've asked you, you know, a bunch of times today, but 
you're not just telling us that you did it because you feel bad for Shanann's memory. You did it. I have to say, like, you know, after this was all over, you know, people would bring up, like, oh, my gosh, I bet you're going to find out that Chris, you know, used to torture animals and, you know, all this stuff. You can imagine, like, you know, hearing that someone's capable of that, what have they done in their past, those kinds of things. Can you think back to your past at all, like your childhood, and think about any other moments that maybe you felt this same rage? I mean, obviously didn't do anything like that, but maybe felt that rage and, like, what would have triggered that or anything like that? Not really. I mean, I was always, like, somebody that kind of coaxed people down not to... Like, if somebody wanted to fight somebody else, I didn't get in a fight, like, when I was in third grade, but it was like, you know, we rip each other's shirt, and away crying, mm-hmm. you know? It was, like, stupid. Mm-hmm. I was just like, why did I, why did I do that? And, like, maybe that was, like, my only, like, bad thing I did in school. <laughs> so, I can't think of Did you anything. feel it on the inside, whether you didn't act it out? Like, did you feel, like... Like, if someone bullied you at school or if someone whatever, like, would it still be inside you? Like, did you feel like that even though you didn't actually act on it? I don't believe because I was always, you know, I never really talked to many people. So I never, I mean, people knew who I was, but they didn't really, I mean, I never really spoke to many people. That's why I never had a girlfriend in high school. I mean, I was always kind of, like, under the radar. Did you feel like you had low self-esteem? I won't say low self-esteem. It was just, like, I didn't want to be... I didn't want to be part of, like, a group or a clique. I just, like, you know, I had a couple friends, and I sat at a lunch table with them, and or sat out, and they called, like, the fish pond area, and don't out there. And I didn't really want a whole lot of friends. It's kind of, like, close-knit. And just wasn't out there. Not because people knew who I was, but it wasn't a matter of, like, I was popular or anything. Mm-hmm. Can you attribute that to anything in your childhood? Why you were uh, like My that? sister was always the popular one. Uh-huh. She was more like my mom, like more like outgoing and like me and my grandma would always sit outside middle school waiting for her to come out and pick her up and she'd always be the last one out. She'd talk to everybody in the hallway. And my grandma was always like, where is she at? She's she only waiting. But you know, it's, I was just the opposite of her. Mm-hmm. And I was like, sometimes you have kids that are like the same and you have opposite. Me and my sister are completely opposite. Maybe I just drew on that, that I didn't want to be the popular one, I wanted to be just, you know, just a regular, regular guy. Mm-hmm. So the, there was not really like bullying or not like I remember. Nobody ever really came up to me or wanted to fight me or. Never got made that. fun of, never. No, I mean, I was, I had braces and I had like a bowl cut for a while. I guess it could have made me fun. Made I think most kids that. did. <laughs> 80s and 90s were cruel. <laughs> yeah, it's like you know, the Jim Carrey cut with a bowl on your head. Just, yeah. Okay. around, but yeah, it was. I don't think there was anything that would anything that would be pent up inside me from from childhood. childhood. Or, I know you talked about your dad having an addiction when I was talking to you. That what was after you? I left. Uh, I left home. Is that was it cocaine or something or it was, it was some type of powder? I'm not sure if that okay. was cocaine. I guess How do you think that affected you? I don't think it affected me. At, uh, well, it did affect me, but it just didn't like take. Like deep down, it didn't like really hurt as much as I thought it would. It was kind of weird because when my thing with my mom and my sister told me, like when they had talked to him about it, it didn't seem to register. Like I said, like he would just change subject, and like when I talked about it, he eventually um, immediately changed subject. I was like because they found like you know cuts on his like CDs and stuff where he would like you know like oh. separate it and stuff like that. Because yeah. he, he had a car dealership. I mean, find guys that do that kind of stuff all the time, I guess. But he was just coping with, like, I never came back home. And just before I met Shanann, and it was just... Did you feel guilty that he's now using drugs because you never came back home like he lost his kid? You know, I, was, I never really knew why he was doing it. I, I, after the fact, I knew it was because he was coping with that, oh. but... I never knew why you really actually turned to drugs. My mom thought he was having an affair because all this money was going somewhere else for the drugs. But, like, I'm not myself. I never use drugs. So I always try to tell them, like, hey, like, what's going on? Like, why do why you need to use this? And just, like, you could use this for a whole lot better better things, you know, just you know, throw your life away. I mean, like, because you could see in his face, like, you know, it's like eyes, re- or, like, everything was getting, like, you know, 
I feel like they're in your face and like, the first game was getting all loose and like he was losing a lot of weight. Mm-hmm. Nose was bleeding all the time, kind of stuff like that. And I was just I'm like, hey, you know, you smoked like every day of your life since you were like 15 or 16. And, like, I can't get you to stop that, but I get you to stop this. Right. He put it away, I guess, pretty quick after I talked to him about it. You think you were closer to your dad than your mom? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, we we always went to races together, and yes. you know he always came to my sports, uh, played a couple school sports, right ball, all that kind of stuff. You know, yeah. mom would come to sometimes. But my dad was always there. Always there. Yeah. Even if I wasn't playing, he just come there just just in case I can't win in there. Aww. So that's cool. Yeah. yeah. Well, I wondered if they hadn't visited because they didn't weren't ready to visit, or if it was a money thing, or you know, like. Visit here Getting the time or, off. Or, yeah, you. Like, visit here? Yeah, visit here. Well, I just told him, like, well, we can't go out in the snow. So it's oh. like, you know, I don't want it's These just, roads are bad. Yeah, it's, um, I think it's like an hour from either Madison Airport, whatever yep. the way it is. I told him, like, wait till springtime. Good advice. Yeah. Pretty brutal. It <laughs> was <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> Do they have money to get here? They sold my toolbox to okay. get some money to come out here. Okay. Yeah, so they'll they'll come out here and like they said April, but I was like, no, just maybe push it till June. They said they come to have a blizzard out here in April. Yeah, sometimes yeah. Too, like the late spring blizzard. Yeah, so yeah. lake effects stuff is crazy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And how are you? How are you doing mentally? I mean, the first time I when I first I mean I didn't know I was coming here. Obviously, I mean I just when I was at DRDC, like, I swooped you up, didn't I? Was, I was there a week. Like first day I got there, they put me to the ringer. Like. I had like eleven tests to do, like 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 mental tests, like reading, math, all kinds of stuff. It's see where my IQ was, and then I just sat there the rest of the week. And then Sunday came along, and after dinner they said, "All right, strip down and put this on." Okay, walked outside and put me in the van. I'm just like, okay, I had no idea what was going on. And they stopped in Sterling, which really freaked me out. I was just like, I don't want to do this because I heard so many horror stories about that place. And, mm-hmm. and uh, they just stopped producing the bathroom and then we kept going. In the prison? Do they use the bathroom at the prison? Yeah, it was like at, a, at the watchtower outside. Oh. And um, we went to Nebraska, sheriff's office there, and then another sheriff's office in Iowa. It was the bathroom, breakfast, and then we got here. I, I asked him, I only talked to him once. I'm like, can you tell me like, uh, where we're going? Like, just a destination state. He was like, I don't know. But there was like a, it was like one of those, like, transport vans, like, mm-hmm. where it was like, had just the middle where I was sitting there, and uh, I could see out the window, and I could see, like, they would put in an address each time. Like, they had, like, four sets of addresses to each one they had to go to. I, they just would never tell me where we were going to end up. What was, what did they say your IQ was? I was like 140. 35 or something like that. Is that high? I don't even know what. That's good. That's good. above average. Yeah. yeah. It was, it was me back to high school for real. I'm like. <laughs> the train parts the city and all that stuff. Yeah, it was a lot of, it was a lot of word problems, a lot of like uh, geometry, a lot of like, you know, patterns. Like if this was moved this way and then it was like, like a series of them. Like, all right, what's this one going to be? Just a lot of, a lot of stuff like that. But like the further, the further you got along, Harder it got. I'm just like, it's like great. And it was like they give you this little take, take that pen and take the little tube out in the middle, and that's where you're using the filling these little, oh. little scantron sheets and everything. It's like going to high school again. Do you know how long you're going to be here? Neither do I, by the way. And do you know? Are you going to get a job? I, uh, if if uh, since I'm staying here, well, since I'm got staffed here, hey, you have to work. Oh. What's your job now? I don't have one yet. Okay. They haven't moved me out of the accept or evalu- acceptance and evaluation. Assessment oh. and evaluation. Are you still in that phase? Okay. And how long will that take? Well, right now, like, since I've been staffed here, I'm just waiting for them to move me over to a different unit. And are you in uh, Gen Pop right now? No. no. I'm in a unit. There's like 11 or 12 of us on there. There was okay. like 22 when I first got there, but they've been transferred to the other prisons around. Oh, and what are the other guys like? They're like, they're fine. Like the first time, like I sat out and ate like a 
breakfast or lunch one, I was, I was, <laughs> I was just like, this, this hasn't happened, like, nonsense, you know, I just never happened. Yeah. Like, they're like, like I said, they walk, they walk the hallways down, and I, I moved to Colorado. Yeah, well, I yeah. heard that, yeah. So it was like, you know, being next, like, right, like this, eating next to somebody, I was just like, are you going to, like, take a sport and try to stab me or something, or what? But it's totally different here. I mean, people know who I am, but, like, they don't, like, you know, run at me or jump at me or, like, apparently they, um, the guys that work here, they, they know that, I guess, other Maxes are, like, keep locked down, like, 23, 22 hours a day. Oh, so then this isn't all right place to be? For, like, like other Max, for other Max guys. Good. So, uh, they said it's the best Max, but the worst medium. Oh. Because uh, if if you're max, you're working, so you're you know out of your cell working, like mm-hmm. you know if you're a clerk or if you're in the kitchen mm-hmm. or if you're in the rec area, you're doing something. Okay. But um, yeah, they said like if you get stabbed here, it'll be best for you. Plus, they said it's not as like rowdy as some of the other places. Yeah. Pretty intense. Yeah. So like, I mean, I'm I'm going to the GP area. I just don't know when. And you think it'll be while you're here? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, they, they said, like, uh, I guess it could take, you know, it takes a lot to get moved from max to medium because in Colorado I was classified as minimum restrictive. But with the charges, it would have been medium. But here it's automatically max. And what are the other guys in for, do you know? Uh, they said most guys in here for, like, gangs, bitches, and uh, sex offenders, and mainly people that have 20 years in. So people who were in for a long time and who would otherwise have a pretty hard time at a jail yeah. for whatever they did, yeah. whether it be snitching or, or yeah, like, you know, children. Or, yeah, or there's uh, some people from other states here as well, and um, I guess there's a couple cops here too. Okay. So, you know, things have happened, and they just don't think it'd be better. It'd be a lot better if they're here and not in another. Yeah. Okay. So what kind of jobs are available? I mean, well, it's... Um, They'll they'll probably have me as in the kitchen, more than like that's where everybody starts out, like mm-hmm. either washing dishes or like you know putting foods on the trays or helping pots and pans, something like that. Mm-hmm. So they have like libraries. They have like you know I think this is the PSU area, the psych area. So they'll have like different guys doing clerk stuff around here. I mean they I didn't, they have over like 300 GP guys here that are like live here. So they have a job for every one of them. Wow. There's even a guy that shovels the sidewalks. I think we saw him. Yeah, we saw, we saw him. him. Yeah, yeah. I don't want. I don't know if I'm going to be that guy. <laughs> Not here. Do you um? Do you go to therapy? Do you have see a psychologist? There's, do you... there's actually the one I uh, named like a Javier or something like that. She's uh she seems like once a month. She's actually from Aurora. Really? Yeah, it was weird. I walked in, I saw a Bronco flag. I'm like. <laughs> like, uh, okay, who are you? But, um, yeah, it's... So does she give you therapy, or...? No, she just, like, talks to me just to see if I need anything, or, if, like, like, if I need psych meds, or if I need anything like that, which I find all that stuff, but most people in my unit have meds. That's just what. to have them, or do you think they need them? Well, it's, like, a special management unit. Like, they just put me on there to keep me away from DP, and, like, most people either, like, just have, like, some type of medication they're on. But you don't take anything? No. They just keep me in there until the security advisor says, you know, you can get moved to keep you down the hall. What kind of stuff, like food and stuff, do you miss the most from the outside? Food? Yeah. Well, I know from, you know, my last time in North Carolina, Bojangles, that was really good. I don't know if you, had, you guys ever go to North Carolina? Mm-hmm. Is that barbecue? It's like, it's chicken and biscuits. Mm-hmm. And that barbecue place down the street from Fred and Petey. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Smokehouse, yeah. George Boys. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, the burn ends. I miss that. And just, you know, you know, I miss Shanann's cooking. That's for her, like her spaghetti sauce and fried pizza. Yeah. Fried pizza? I don't think yeah. I've heard of that. What is I've that? I've never heard of that. <laughs> so her mom has, or I think it was her mom, her, her grandmother on her mom's side, had this, like, pizza, this dope, uh, homemade dope you can make, and, uh, Make up the dough, and she would make it up with Bella's less sometimes, with like a little smaller one, but she'd make a really big one. And then um, she would uh, 
put it in the oven, the bottom oven, and let it sit there for a couple hours, not put it on or anything, just let it rise. Mm -hmm. And then uh, once it's done, take it out, form it, throw the, the spaghetti sauce she has, and spread it around, and throw the mozzarella and pepperoni and put it on the oven 350. And yeah. But what part is fried though? Well, they have some parts you call on the grill, you can put oh. on the. Okay. Put it on the uh, stove too. Okay. It's really good. I mean, it's really thick. Yeah. So you got. Apparently, we need this. From yeah. Sandy. <laughs> I'm gonna work on that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right or no. <laughs> yeah. Are you able to stay out of trouble here? Yeah. Uh, no. Nobody's getting any fights. Nobody's. You're not getting written up for anything. You're not getting. Yeah. I try to keep a little profile here. So I don't wanna. I guess they say if you get like two contact reports, they'll ship you out if you work here. To another, want... to another location? Yeah. Oh, so then does that incentivize people putting their nose down? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because I guess a couple guys got busted for having a cell phone. Oh. How we got it in? No kidding. Yeah. Like, that stuff just baffles my mind how that stuff gets to. <laughs> I mean, they, they won't even let, like, if somebody sent me a letter and it has, like, even like, someone sent me a Christmas card with glitter on it, they'll let me have it because it's glitter. Mm -hmm. It's like it's contraband. So, like, yeah, I don't have people get cell phones. So what do you do with all these letters that are coming into you? Most of them, like, I just have, like, this, if somebody writes me once, I'll never write them. Because I'll know, like, who they are, like, where they're from. I'll keep it. If it's, a, if it's like, a weird letter, I'll just try not throw it away. If it's, like, a supportive letter, I'll keep it around just, like, you know, a supportive letter. And then, like, like, I've had some people, like, write me, like, a second and third time, but they've changed the way they talk or like they've said different things. Like there's, there's like this, this dude in like California that, that wrote me, he's like a, he's a senior in high school and wrote me. It's like, okay, dude, I, I'll look at the name. Like, okay. Turn it up, do it away. He wrote me again, like, like two weeks ago, totally different. Like never mentioned like his age, never mentioned his study. Like, Hey, like I support you. I'm like all this, like that. Like, if I didn't recognize his name, I would have known, like, he was just an 18 year old kid, senior trying to, trying to just, like, probably just get information. Trying to, you know, because there's, there's been, like, journalists and, like, mm -hmm. other people, like, like, you could kind of tell, like, they ask a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. But I try to, like, take into effect who's writing me and, like, just not to respond. Like, I've responded to a few people just because, like, either my parents have talked to them on the outside and then I kind of know, okay, it's a real person. Oh. But, like, there's some people that, like, it seems like they're just trying, like, to get help for themselves, too. Like, some people ask, like, you know, like, like just for spiritual advice. They're asking for spiritual yeah. advice from you. Yeah. yeah, like, you know, if they're not asking about the case, I'll write them back. If they ask about the case, I don't write them back. Yeah. You think you'll be in love again? There's a lot of women out there that are in love with you. No. I don't think that happens. I'm not the guy that's down the street or whatever it is. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard enough about that guy since I've been here. What, are you, what have you heard about him? He got engaged over a letter. He did, yeah. That, that's pretty insane. But yeah, I don't see it, so. Do you have some ladies that are giving you a lot of... Like, just telling them that, telling you that they're in love with you and that kind of stuff? Well, I've had a couple letters that have been like, you know, I hear you get a lot of letters from, like, lady friends that tell you all you need to know. I'm like, those letters, trust me. Like, there was, I guess there was one letter in Colorado that someone sent me a picture of them in the key. And it just, like, went on from there. That was, like, the only letter I ever got that was like that. But the press took it and just went with it. Yeah. Do you, you ever get requests from the press? Mm -hmm. And how does that work? Paired up. Totally. Are you, so, are you personally already planning? Well, I, I don't like, you know, kind of back. Would they allow you to talk with them? Would they allow them in here to talk with you? I don't know. Uh, I guess some stations have asked to come in here and talk to me, but they have told them no. Oh. But they're, uh, I've gotten letters from like, you know, Denver, like Denver stations who will not want to talk to me. And then quotation marks off the record. I'm like, yeah, right. <laughs> Anything I write. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. So, yeah, I just tear it up, throw it away. Have you thought about like writing a book or anything like that? No, that's you know, I, nothing like that. 
mom, you... my mom and dad was like, no, go ahead. My mom and dad was saying maybe you should like write down like how you feel or like you know how you've been dealing with this type thing. Just write it down, and that would be my story. But I'm just like, right. That's not me. I mean, I've always been had a really crazy imagination. So like when I was a kid, like. I even convinced my teacher I was going to, I went to Japan over the summer or to China or something. But she said, you know, like, you know, you should write down, like, you know, your story, like, how you cope with this. Why did you convince your teacher you had gone to another country? It was just, like, what you did over the summer. And I was like, oh, China. I started right. <laughs> and she actually believed it. I, I was really convincing. Oh, you're a smart dude. Yeah. It was, it was, and they, my parent-teacher conference said, so how's China? <laughs> nope. Earlier, you were talking about how this experience you're gonna want to help people. What do you mean by that? So, like, like this couple letters that I've gotten, like this one, this one girl, she's in like an abusive relationship, and she just can't find a relationship, like with God. Like, I've been, I've read, I never read the Bible before, before all this, like mm -hmm. in well, County, I read it. Okay. In the segregation hold there, it was like, that was the only book I got. I said, okay. I, I read it cover to cover, and I never thought I could, being how, how many pages were in the Bible, but right. it stuck with me, and like, I've been reading it more and more here. Like, I got a different version here. I've just been reading it and just writing down, like, a couple scriptures a day, like, to give my mom and dad. Mm -hmm. They've been, like, making a little journal and stuff like that. And my Uncle Johnny, uh, his wife, um, Martha, they're actually uh, missionaries, and um, and one of my cousins is actually as well, and they've been helping my mom and dad. And they've been they, they they looked at come up a couple of my letters, and they were they were they were amazed at how like how mature I've gotten with like the Bible and everything, the scripture. And it's just like one thing, one gift that I did get was a good memory, as far as like being able to memorize stuff. Okay. And like that's what happened with cars and with the oil foot, I can just memorize acronyms like that. And I've been memorizing a lot of different scripture. I can just kinda like help people that way. Like there's been inmates that have left my unit and went to a different place and have written me just to ask, like, you know, can you give me a couple of scriptures to help me through this? Like, do you know of any? I'll just I can help somebody that way. Yeah. That's good. Do you get to go to school or anything? They don't have any else programs here. Oh, they don't. That's a accept or evaluation prison, so they don't. This is, I think, this is when they have the sex offender class in here. Mm. That's the only thing they really have. Are you gonna go to that? No. <laughs> no, I, I always ask like, why do people go in there? And they're like, you don't want to go in that class. Like, oh, <laughs> you no. stay away from that class. I'm like, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's the only thing they have here, but they have other. Like, that's like the map of the prisons they have here. Yeah, I was looking at that earlier. Oh, so, wow. They have a lot here. Yeah. Like three right in this area. Yep, they're right around here. I was just amazed that when I, one thing I did see out the window when I first, there was like a neighborhood that's right next to the prison. Yeah. So I was just like, is that, that the same thing? Yeah. Is that weird? Because <laughs> yeah. like in Colorado, it seemed like they're all like out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, right? Sterling's in the middle yeah. of nowhere. Okay. Yeah, Easy. Well, um, we might take a little break right now. But I think it's almost time for you to eat lunch. Yeah. Like 20 about minutes? The, uh, like the polygraph. <laughs> Everything just like... <laughs> <laughs> I look up the time, I'm like, oh, wow. This went four hours. <laughs> Holy cow. They might let us come back and talk to you. Okay. Um, there might be a couple more things you want to go over. Okay. Is that something you're up for? Awesome. Okay. And then the other thing is we might be back in a month and a year and two years. If you're up for it. Um, yeah. Now that's way down the road, but I guess maybe in the back of your mind, just think about that. And um, I hope so far today has been all right for you. Yeah, it's been. Honestly, when I walked in, I was just like, wait, I know these guys. I know these guys. <laughs> I looked at you, I'm like, like that, that's not the site counselor. That's, oh my gosh. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> They're Colorado people. Because I looked past that A&E sergeant. I was like, all right, who am I meeting? I go. Yeah. It's not the A&E sergeant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So um, there's a possibility we might not make it back today. I just want to let you know, but okay. we might. Um, so uh, we really appreciate you talking to us. Oh, thanks yeah. for coming. Yeah. Total took me off guard. I had no idea. So that... yeah. yeah. And again, um, this isn't it. The case is over. Close. So that's not, that's not what today's about.
people really appreciate it. He did a lot of things really well, really well, really good. He made a lot of good decisions. Well, obviously, we're here because of one bad decision, but I think that you've taken steps to get past that. Um, so, yeah, we might come back after one time for lunch if that's all right. That's fine. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go see if I can grab somebody. <laughs> Yeah. I think I had the better drive. <laughs> well, I think you probably did too. <laughs> Mine was like 50 minutes. So it was like two hours. Yeah, it was, it was snowing. Snow. It's pretty nasty. Like effect, out there. Um, yeah, the wind's blowing. Not like wind like Colorado, though. It's a hell of a lot colder. Yeah. Well, and Oof. yeah, the roads aren't getting cleared like they would get cleared in Colorado. Yeah. I think they just have so much. Yeah, you it know, just that, comes in and just dumps. And yeah. Colorado just melts within a couple hours. Right. Here, just, Honestly, I haven't seen it melt here. Since well, that's here. the thing. Everyone's yeah, houses piles. are just piled, you know, like, oh, it's the next snow, and they just pile it on <laughs> top. So it doesn't look like anything melts. No. <laughs> it's just a problem. So. Yeah. Okay. Do you guys go outside for rack or anything? Or? No, not when it's, it has to be over 50 degrees. Oh. So you won't be out for a while. <laughs> no, they have like a rec, uh, like a little basketball court down the hall from where my unit is. So we get there about five days a week for like 40 minutes. Nice. So it's a good chance to just get out and just run around a little bit. Just mm -hmm. Stretch your legs a little bit. Yeah. Any weights or anything you can use? Yeah, there's some weights in there. We go with another unit, and they're uh, it's the infirmary unit that, go with, that goes with us. And most of them are like in wheelchairs and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So we kind of like, I just like them do. I don't want to get, like, get in their way. Just, like, let them, like, they have, like, the pull-downs and the, the right, lats and all that kind of road machine and stuff like that. So, it's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah but I think they have, like, a track or something like that you can run around yeah. uh, once we can go outside. Mm hmm Colorado, they let you go outside. Like, I never went outside, but, like, at the DRDC, they just said, do you want to go outside? Let you go outside. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> Things. Buyer beware. <laughs> like, hey, you want to wreck today? You're like, no. <laughs> no okay. it's, like, it's like 30 degrees outside. You can go outside if you want. Yeah. But their, their version of wreck was like, they put you out in a little cage and let you like, kind of walk around for a little bit. Yeah. That'd be already seen. It was a little different there. Hey, if we don't want to come back, I just want to let you know I talked to your dad the other day. Okay. And and just to get your property released to him. Oh, a phone and stuff? Yeah, okay. your phone and and um, what else? Did you wallet. Do? Your wallet. Okay. Yeah, and we have some other things too. So, okay. but I have to wait for the DA to release all that stuff. Okay. Red tape crap. Gotcha. But then we'll get we'll, we'll send it off. To you. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I know you wanted my phone just to yeah. some pictures on that. As we said. Yeah. I think I had that phone since like 2016, so there's a, there's a good amount on there. Yeah. If we don't make it back today, it's going to be because of some of their scheduling. It's not that we don't want to talk to you some more. It's fine. There's more things we can talk about. Okay. Um, but if we don't make it back, that's why. Okay. Yeah, it's a holiday, so I figured they'd be pretty much open. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't see many people walking through the hallways and then came down here. Usually there's a ton. Mm -hmm. Of visitors or what? No, just a ton of people, just like workers walking up and down. It oh, seemed pretty I sparse. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it did seem sparse, didn't it? Mm hmm that was one thing I was shocked about when I walked around here. I was always used to seeing everybody in handcuffs walking around the hallways. Mm. Here. That is interesting, right? I thought the same thing. I couldn't tell who was who. Yeah, it's like you, you can't get, necessarily you tell. Got, you see the red tag, it's like an inmate, but somebody else somebody lives here. Oh. Or like somebody that's like actual civilian works here. So then you're not in shackles and handcuffs that often? I haven't been since I got here. You're kidding. Huh. I was, that's, that's why I was amazed. I was like, when the guy took me in the hallway, I was like, Anything? No, just keep walking. Yeah, it's, that's uh, that's my psych contract was saying. This is Max. She first got here. Like, no, it's like Max or something. Mm. It just like you know, if, if you if you want to act up, they'll put or you. Use it. You'll earn those shackles back. Oh yeah, they they'll put you in handcuffs, take you to the hole. Yeah, yeah, and then they'll ship you out of here. They have a solitary here. Oh yeah, they'll strap you out of the bed. Oh yeah, Jeez. can't move. Yeah, a reminder of. Yeah, you behave, right? Yeah, it's like don't not that don't, you need it. Don't but... pass food, don't pass anything that's not yours. Otherwise you're gonna Do you get to buy like commissary and stuff? Mm -hmm. It's different here. It's a it's like a bubble sheet instead of like Colorado is like a little 
little touch screen you can do. Uh -huh. But here's like a little Scantron, you send it off to like Missouri, and it's, it's the same company. But it's the, uh, just takes longer to get here. Mm. Yeah, I just, I just. Like what kind of stuff can you buy? Uh, like ramen soup and peanut butter and uh, oatmeal, like lemonade mix, stuff like that. I usually just get the, the oatmeal and the ramen soup. Do your parents put money on your books then? Mm. Yeah, I'm not sure how, like, that restitution stuff's going to work. I'm sure, like, that'll, like, whatever, whoever sent me money on the canteen will probably, like, it'll take a little bit of it, too. Oh, yeah. It's right here. Okay. Right. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Cool. Thank you, Chris. All right, thank you.